Downs Motorsport Park, New Zealand's northernmost motorsport facility. Since opening in 2015, this North Waikato track has gone on to host many major events. The New Zealand Grand Prix, the Castro Toyota Formula Regional Oceania Championship, and the seventh and final round of the 2024 Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. But this weekend, it's time to slip the grip with some high octane clutch kicking, tyre burning smoke show of Australasia's best pro drifters. This is Hampton Downs Motorsport Park. This is the Repco T1NZ. Welcome to Hampton Downs Motorsport Path in the North Waikato and ready for Repco D1NZ round number two in glorious conditions this Saturday afternoon. The slight breeze brushing across the track and the temperatures expect to be around 20 degrees. It is an absolutely cracking day and for all the competitors today in the pro division, top step is where they want to be. All right, that's where they want to be. Last time out, it was Case Pullen Burry, the new kid on the block who blitzed everybody in round number one. Well, he's had his problems already this weekend. Blew a gearbox in practice this morning, like his brother did, Cody, beforehand and overnight. But I got the thumbs up from Case about five minutes ago. He is good to go. We've already had pro sport, and that was great. Dan Edwards picking up the win. And then another great story. Bash the car, put it in the wall earlier today, came out and won the damn thing. He was stoked really good but now the big boys and girls step up to what they need to do to win round number two of Repco d one nz that is what we are all about but what is different if you're watching on Facebook before the pros are going to run anti-clockwise here's Steve with the track map Hampton Downs Motorsport Park round two of the Repco d one nz let's take a look at the club circuit which for the first time for D1NZ we're running the pros in the reverse direction there are two outside clipping points with four outer zones. It's a fast flowing track which will require precision and should not be taken for granted. The action zone for viewers both at the track and at home is the last corner, up close and personal with the concrete. This is Hampton Downs Motorsport Park. This is round two of the Repco D1NZ. And Hampton Downs is really busy. They've got round seven of Super Sprint over there with the uh, Toyota 86s. That's tomorrow live on Sky Sport and K1 Australia, where you are right now, and also motorsport.tv. Welcome to New Zealand. Welcome to a wonderful, a wonderful Saturday. You know what? Sunny today, qualifying yesterday. Wet, wet, wet. Take a geese. Hampton Downs Motorsport Park round two of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship and the weather did not play ball for the pro drivers Fanger Dan Woolhouse, a four times champion getting sideways over rotating in the second turn the same happened for Jaron Olive Croner the V12 got the power down but one person that certainly did was Luke Fink 91.7 was the score for the Australian fourth place as good as he could get rubbing the cones the way they want to see it happen RHB on the side of Clayton Daly's car. The Tauranga driver moved into pro. This is his second season. 93.3 for Clayton Daly. Just throwing the Supra around, as we mentioned, in tough conditions. Second place in qualifying, Connor Halligan. The JOB, Jason Over's builders, 1.5 JZ powered Nissan S14. Looked on song out there in the wet conditions. Connor certainly knowing his way around this Hampton Downs track, pedaling it beautifully as he can fire out onto the final turn. And there could be only one number one, and this is your pan head top qualifier, Jordan Joyce out of Auckland, driving the elite performance, Sylvia. Foot flat to the floor, 95 points was his, the top qualifier. Just throwing it in as we ride on board with him. So much to do behind the wheel of a drift car, especially when it's raining. But it'll be the final turn here at Hampton Downs. Jordan Joyce will sit at the top spot. He'll be ready for battles. And this is how they sat Jordan Joyce at the top. Connor Halligan, Clayton Daly, before moving through to Fink, West, Slammett, Jenkins. And that's how they looked further back in the grid. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to round number two of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. We are here at Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, and we are ready for our first battle of the day. This is top 24 action. This is the pros. Tony G, let's start us up. Calvin Clark and Kurt Blackie we have in the first battle of the top 24. Calvin in the 16th position, 17th P4 qualifying for Kurt Blackie. So Calvin's leading them out and doing a good job out front. Kurt Blackie though, the proximity is really good from this pro first pro battle of the day. Mistake for Kurt Blackie as they head down to the final turn. It's going to be Calvin Clark who makes his way back out. Starts to run that high line, keeps off the concrete. I said during the, uh, the discussion about this track here that that is one place to watch. It's scary. Yeah, so as they wash off the final turn, isn't it? It's the last sort of place. They, the clipping point is well out all the way. The cones, you'll see them a bit later on as we get to the woods, the end of the replay. Well, this is this Tauranga one. versus Tauranga right now. It's Calvin Clark in the green machine. He's got Wolfie, Kurt Blackie in behind. Saw a mistake, though, by Kurt Blackie during the mid part of the lap. Yeah, and Calvin Clark there getting right out to that outer zone. Just gets a little tiny dirt turbo there and filling out the outer zones nicely either way. Kurt Blackie showing good proximity there through the middle part of the section. And as we get through the final corner, there's a big gap opened up there. And Kurt Blackie looked like he was on a bit of a break actually. But you can see the clipping point on the final corner is way out. And issues for Kurt Blackie, whatever happened in that one there has meant that he has actually gone and had to drive back down into the pits. You can see at the top middle of the shot, Kurt Blackie making his way down. So we'll see if we can get down there. And uh, in the meantime, I guess I probably will start looking to head to the next battle. And you can see them lining up on the right hand side. So Kurt Blackie, he's called his two minutes. He's Calvin Clark, just parked up, ready to go again. Limitless tyres on the side, of course, Smith Industries and Prime Avocados for a bit of extra airflow through the centre of that car, isn't he, Calvin Clark? It'll be nice and hot out there, of course. A completely different day as far as the weather's concerned from yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I was going to say. So you can see the heat waves. Launchmaster Willie out there as well. Looks like he's enjoying the sunshine a lot more than he was enjoying the rain yesterday. He, he absolutely dumped on the poor guy. It was bucketing down. He's in his T-shirt afterwards. You were right there, Willie? Well, did it rain? <laughs> So Dave Steadman, he qualified in ninth position. He gets an automatic walk through or a buy, if you will, with no 24th qualifying driver. Bit of work to do for a couple, though. We've obviously got Taylor James and Sean Potros. They're going to have to battle out to see who goes up against the constantly controversial Luke Fink. And then we've got Sam West, who will be going up against the winner of the battle between Ben Jenkins and Cody Pullenbury. That's the left-hand side of the tree. Here we go. Really. They're not yeah. touching it. Yeah, he doesn't look very happy, does and he? And the Kurt gloves Blackie? are coming off. Sam West in the background doing precisely nothing. And he's gone down to see Joe down there. OK, with, with Stephen McIver. OK, uh, not, a, not a happy face. See if we get some something from Kurt. Doesn't look happy at all. Oh, no, mate. Can, can you tell us what's up? Oh, we've blown an axle, but we don't have any time to fix it, so unfortunately it must be out. OK, all right, there you go. Simple as that, blown axle. All right, so so what's happening right now is that uh, Joe's going through, discussing with the driver right now, going through the actual rule book. So we've had a few new rules that have come in, and one of them is goodbye, ka kite anō, the five-minute rule. You know, it was almost like that. Like some of the drivers over many years took the mick out of it. Now it's gone. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's yeah, it's got to be extremely hard for Joe, the one that's got to relay the new rule through to Kurt Blackie. You can see the disappointment on Blackie's face already, um, and the discussion that's going on between yeah, Joe uh, and Kurt. Kurt's dad, Dave, in the background. So. I mean, what this does is it, it um, obviously lets the day flow somewhat better, being a two-minute rather than a five-minute. Tell you uh, what, the hard, one of the hardest things that we've got to do is make live television. And it's, it's not actually easy to do. So uh, this is Calvin Clark. He's actually allowed, because the other driver isn't there, he's actually allowed to elect to uh, just to finish off his run. So is he going to do that, or is he just going to make his way through? Now, I haven't seen his standard spotter this weekend, of course, none other than a two-times New Zealand Drift King, Cole Armstrong. So he's just going to tour back to the track because those are some good tyres to use at a track day sometime soon. Yeah. So Calvin Clark will take the win 
over Kurt Blackie, and he will have none other than your P1 qualifier, Jordan Joyce, in his next battle for the top 16. Well, I don't think that's Jordan Joyce. I think that might be the guy that had an issue like, um, yesterday. Yeah, two names that you never often see, especially together in the top 24 battle, Taylor James and Sean Potros. This is going to be one heck of a battle to open up in the top 24 for these two drivers and uh, very difficult and then of course their work's cut out for them they're coming up against Luke Fink one or the other and my mate Luke has certainly got a point to prove this weekend CWR JRI John Ray Insurance on the side of the Central Drift Team 1000 horsepower Sylvia RB34 it's Tay J Taylor James who's on the right hand side or our left, sorry, and he's going up against the elite performance machine of Sean Potros. Both of these drivers are constantly at the top end of New Zealand drifting. This is a top 24 battle, something that neither of them often do. Taylor James running the high line. Yeah, so two very aggressive drivers as well. So look for the chase. Actually, Sean Potros, as I say, that has fallen off a little bit. It's not the proximity we're used to seeing from Potros. And Taylor James doing a good job out in front with the lead line. And lots of smoke as well. Sean Potros doing a good job to keep with him. As you'll see, Potros, oh, he almost over-rotated. And that's going to put, that correction there is going to put a huge advantage in favour of Tokoroa's Taylor James. Yeah, very uncharacteristic from Potros. Obviously a brand new motor in that. If you haven't heard overnight, those boys pulled that motor out. And thanks to JT Performance, they've got that going again. We'll take a look at the Dale ITM replay. So Taylor James, nice big arc. Gets out nice and wide to fill out that first outer zone. And pretty good as well there. But yeah, Sean Potros, he's lost back a little bit. He couldn't get in the pocket behind the smoke. So he did well not to get lost in the big smoke show that's coming off the Delinos of Taylor James. Earlier in the day, we of course, there's the mistake here, but he did not, he being Sean Potros, did not lose uh, lose his drift. So he's just gonna get a deduction. Other drivers there would have just over-rotated and lost it. Um, earlier in the day, we saw the Pro Sport Championship go through, which was a, a great victory for Daniel Edwards. One of the things that we've seen a huge difference in our basically our first and second battle of the day is the amount of smoke that these guys are able to generate. Absolutely, and it's just a huge amount. Oh, a bit of smoke coming. Out of the back of Taylor James's car there. Might be a nitrous purge. No, that'll come out the front. Okay, he can hit zero. Is he dropping back? No. So just watch that rearward car. So good proximity from Taylor early on here. He's being nice and aggressive up on Sean Potras's door. The elite performance. S15 out front, and Taylor James has uh, had a big correction as well in the chase position. So is he going to do enough here, Potros, to force the issue? Straight Taylor line. James. There is a big issue for Tay James, and he's pulled to the infield. He's pulled to the grass, and the, the only reason you'd pull to the grass is because you're dumping oil. That is a scary thought for the CDT drift team, Taylor James. Like you say, that's naturally, if you're not, if you're new to motorsport, it's kind of a natural reaction if you know that something's happened with oil. Perhaps he's lost oil pressure. Uh, it looks like a fair bit of smoke coming out of the bonnet of that, and even a sign of Taylor wanting to get out of the car potentially could mean some sort of hot smell. So not good news for the CDT S14. And yeah, it looks like there's some temperature coming out of the bonnet of that. So Taylor James out of the car fairly quickly. And yeah, something burning away under there. And there there's is this fire. There. Shoot it. Come on, Ryan. Probably just letting it burn away there. He probably doesn't want uh, that extinguisher powder all through. Gotcha. <sighs> so goodbye Turbo Beanie. So let's take a look at that again. We, we saw a little bit of smoke coming from the line as well or from Taylor James's car. Just a lot of heat out there. Obviously a, a, it's a, a nice warm day here at Hampton Downs. Sean Potros out the front. Doing a great job, good angle as he comes through the centre part to fill out that outer zone. And keep your eye on Taylor James in the back there, straight lines, and comes out of drift completely and pulls straight over to the grass. Just had a reminder from uh, Kenny Ruddle, he's uh, watching at home in Whangarei. The five minute rule does still exist, but it's for contact only. Thanks Kenny, I forgot about that one there. Maybe I didn't even remember it from the start. So, I guess it's line toe time for Tay J. That's uh, essentially a two minute call. 
I try to call him like I'm cheeky to do, but of course one of the biggest problems you find for uh, anything here at Hampton Downs is actually, the, um, is actually trying to have any form of cell phone coverage. What's he doing? Get rid of that. Not needed anymore. I mean, beautifully presented car, isn't it, Taylor James? New delivery and plenty of... Uh... Taylor Automotive, Shaw's. Certainly still knows how to look after his sponsors even when he's pulling. So, okay, there is the go. oil down. And how big is that oil down? Does it keep going? Is it... Yeah, as he suspected, Steve, straight away. Natural reaction for a, a motorsport driver is to get off the circuit as quick as they can. But where is that? That's down the... F well, what, what is it? Uh, Arguably the front straight. Or, so how much oil is there? And when did it start? Because that... He hasn't even been there yet. Uh, that's, uh, that's towards the end of, uh, just that's about where he straight lined and pulled off. Well, that's the start here. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, all right, there we go. So we're shooting across, that would be. So, I mean, yeah, and the fact that he's not driving. Let's, uh, let's go down and see Stephen McIver. What have you got down there in the pits, my friend? Not good news if you're a Central Drift Team member, uh, crew or fan. I've seen a text from Taylor. I'll keep the expletives out of it, but he's pretty much said uh, 100% the motor is and add your word expletive of choice. Uh, so it looks like uh, he's out for that. I, I said to the guys, are we taking that as confirmation that he's done? And they pretty much said, yeah. So until I, I assume now, until it's official, um, Sean goes through. But it sounds like it's a done day for, for, for um, Taylor. Real shame. Well, why don't you go and have a chat to Sean anyway? I think okay. that's self-explanatory. Okay, Steve, I will. But that's your decision, <laughs> not mine, sorry. <laughs> Um, did you uh, did you see what what happened with Taylor? Did you? Um, yeah. So like after the first pass, we were going back to the line, and I noticed his car was smoking like quite a bit. And um, I asked, I like, yelled out to him, asked if it was all good. He gave it a few revs, and it cleared up. So we weren't actually 100 percent sure. Um, yeah, uh, by the sounds of it, maybe a motor, but fuck, <laughs> unlucky because I've just had the fucking <laughs> the same problem yesterday at a crack block. So a massive shout out to um, James Wilden at JT Performance. Uh, running around last night, tuning the car at like six this morning, my whole crew done it all night to get it going, so for, for them I wouldn't be here, so I'm stoked, hopefully you go through and yeah. You need a little bit of luck, don't you? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, I've only done a couple of laps, I'm still trying to get used to the track, so yeah, I'm right, glad that it's sunny, so. At least at this, it looks, it looks unofficially, but it looks like you'll go through the next round, mate. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Sean Potros looks like he's going to potentially take advantage of what happened to Taylor James. Uh, officially, I've seen the text. He says his motor is done. So we'll officially confirm that when we come back. Stay with us live, Repco D1NZ, the pros at Hampton Downs. This is the D1NZ National Drifting Championship. And we can see we've just had a massive oil down out on track caused by the uh, exiting of power from the RB34 of Taylor James. Taylor James from the Central Drift Team. Issues for the Tokoroa-based driver. Bit of work to do, Tony, ahead of the next rounds. Yeah, I mean, you heard Sean Potros talk about the all-nighter that they've had to do on a motor. And uh, the fortune has certainly switched around. Taylor James now on the uh, receiving end of a motor damage and uh, I mean they say things that are all built with smoke on the inside uh, until you let the smoke out and the yeah, Bucky Motorsport crew out there helping with the recovery of the track surface. So of course we have seen and the first thing that Taylor did once he realised uh, what, what was happening for him was he pulled off the track but it wasn't enough with the uh, you can see that a lot of work to be done for the team. So they'll be out with the brooms, out with the brushes, and try to make this place. So there's just a, a glimpse of some of the oil that's gone down. To me, I say, get a few boys out there. We can we can wear that off in a, in a special way that drifters can only do. Yeah, I mean, the way that he's come across that track as well and pulled off, thankfully, um, it's not going to be a long time that, you know, it's not along the racing line. and. 
throwing a lot of oil soak down to try and get that oil up off the surface. So of course this isn't just round two of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship, it's also round number seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championships and the final for that championship. We have done many rounds starting in Topol before heading to five rounds back to back to back from uh, from Topol again through to finishing with the 68th 68th New Zealand Grand Prix which was down in Highlands and uh, now we are back. Now we are back here for the final and of course encompassing some of the best drifting that you're going to see in Aotearoa. Of course we are running in the backwards direction, a new thing for D1NZ. So the team just finishing the cleanup. They'll obviously be out with the brooms etc. So work to do ahead of our next battle of the day. This is Hampton Downs, this is round two, this is the D1NZ. Go D1NZ inside the pits here with uh, Taylor James from the Central Drift team and early in the piece. We haven't even had, uh, we've had one run. One of the contenders is always Taylor. Okay, what happened? I know, I know the face says it all, but what exactly happened? Uh, I actually felt we had a really good lead run and um, pulled up to the line to the second run. I sent a bit of smoke out the exhaust and then it cleared. So checked the oil pressure, everything was good. So we left the line. I was trying to keep up with Sean and then, um, yeah, just through that middle section there, it just made a weird noise and shut down. So I think it's... It's the worst case, but who knows, we'll have a look. But um, yeah, didn't sound good, that's for sure. So done for the day, confirmed done for the day. Yeah, no, definitely out, man. Yeah, it's something pretty major, so. Hard luck, buddy. Yeah, that is what it is. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. Let's talk to Sean Potros because he goes through to the next round. So you've heard what happened. So I know you said you're happy going through to the next round. Get through to the next round. Yeah, it's not the way that we want to go through, like engine failures. I hate mechanicals. Eh? So the only thing I hate losing to is mechanicals. I don't mind losing just by my driving, but mechanicals, yeah, they grind your gears, that's for sure. And like Taylor spent a lot of money on that car and does everything properly, so that's annoying. And I was looking forward to a good bet. I actually done a shit um, lead. I sort of got sucked in, made a little bit of contact there, so wasn't able to put on as good a lead as I thought. But yeah, hopefully this motor's um, from uh, not, HRE is yeah, we'll take it all the way. So yeah, not yeah. not nervous, not nervous that you, oh. you've had to replace an engine overnight. Now just we'd be crossing everything at the moment. Oh, it's, Let's just hope it makes it all worth it, I guess. Well done, mate. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good. Well, the cleanup continues, and the one thing to look at is there's kind of three lines in the middle, and the middle line is the oil that's been dropped down, and that's where you can see it starting to come off. Taylor tried to get off the track at that point. Even the darker lines is the oil that he's almost picked up himself. So that's uh, how you exit out of the back end or the bottom end of a... Um, so you can see they're coming through. They're coming through and uh, trying to get the look at them go. Best way to do just move move the uh, move the dust oil move the oil saw. Okay, let's have a look at what happened here. So Sean Potros is in the lead position. Taylor James, you're the one who caught it first. And even then, a small puff of smoke. You can see that he's not actually emitting a huge amount. He's under power and he knows there's something wrong. Yeah, it's just you, you can tell that the, even the nature or the, the behaviour of that car is abnormal for Taylor as well. There's not as much smoke coming off those rear tyres as normal. He's not right up there on Taylor's, on sorry, Sean's door, and that's where it just shut down. And he moved swiftly to the grass, and from there on he knew that something was up. Yeah, what a, what a great... I mean, that just shows the knowledge that these drivers have. They know that they're about to drop something down that's going to cause a problem. Hey, has it caused one? Yes, it has. But he did the best he could once he realised to um, try and assist the repair of the situation as such. Sean Potros, he was like, as they were going through and, um, and talking to Taylor James, he was straight there getting ready to, uh, to help. Here's the rounds coming up, of course. We've got Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon and Fielding. That is the 12th to the 14th of April. That's rounds three and four. Normal direction the first time. They go reverse the second time. And then it is Bay Park Stadium, the 10th and the 11th of May. Now, tickets are on sale now. D1NZ.com to come along and check us all out at Manfield.
looking extremely forward, as always, to that final round at Bay Park as we take a look at the dummy grid for the next battle that's coming out. And once again, another car or driver that we're very unfamiliar with seeing in the top 24. It is Fanger Dan Woolhouse, qualified in 18th position. Of course, the conditions extremely different today than what they were yesterday. In fact, a, a, a exact contrast. It's black to white. It's the Komata of drift, really, isn't it? Is uh, Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Of course, the uh, four times New Zealand drift King is Fanger Dan Warhouse. He has won more than any other person. Everyone spoke about Gaz the Goat. Gaz left. Fanger said, I'm going to keep hanging around there because I have got a point to prove, and that is a point he has proven. He's gone back to back and just keeps on doing it. The very first time I was at a drift event, I think was he was the champion then. It took me 12 years or 11 years, I think it was, to see his first one. But here is the battle that we have on screen. We've got James the Mungrel McManaway and the other supercharged power Nissan S15 producing, what a liar, he's got more than 800 horsepower. And the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D, it has got 650 horsepower with that Coyote V8 supercharged. So a little bit of a sight lap for these two lads as they go around, they'll check out. Look for them to uh, maybe give it a little squirt through here and see how much they've got. Scrub? Yeah, look, no, he, he knows exactly what he's doing now, a bit. Just checking out those grip levels as they go through where that oil down is. And James and McManaway, those JDM racing cars, always beautifully presented, that purple, purpley pink, very striking colour out on track. We're going to see another one shortly in the form of Mr Luke Fink. So, James and McManaway qualifying. Wow, that's, that's how bad it is. And look at it, the oil soak all over the track Sheep there. Right, mate. That's what we could do. We'll just get George and the Inspire You Media drone to just buzz that off. So that'll be, yeah, be interesting to see what sort of grip level. I mean, the tyres are running out closer to that outer zone as they come out of the middle, the uh, centre section of that. And going back to it though, James McManaway, he qualified in 15th place yesterday. Daniel Woolhouse in 18th place. That puts them both into the 24 bracket. Well, this is the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D heading into the Dale ITM start line. Just waiting for the JDM S15 to make way. On the right-hand side, the higher qualifier, of course, will set the first pass from the lead position. And in 15th position, that is James McManaway. Fanger Dan, 18th place. This is the second to last spot in the, to find a spot in the top 16. Adam Davies versus Jaron Olive Croner will be next. We go down to the hands of Launchmaster Willie. Three, two, one, and it's full scent here at Hampton Downs. And it is the JDM McManaway, James McManaway, who leads out the first half of this battle. So he throws in the initiation. He's very shallow on the outer zone or the tipping point in the first turn and fills out the outer zone nicely this time. You can hear the screaming RTR Mustang coming up behind him, closing that proximity right up on McManaway as they come through the centre part of the section. Now this is the part that's going to have to matter. You can see the amount of dust. A huge drag on the handbrake and I wonder if that has anything to do with the amount of slipperiness we've got because of the oil down from James McManaway. They come through to finish. Well, at least they both know the conditions of the track right now. Yeah, it was a good strong lead run to start with. He just is a little bit shallow as we go through to check out the Dale ITM replay. Keep an eye on those two cones that are on the far left-hand side of the screen. That is a clipping point, the first clipping point, and James McManaway needs to get a little bit further out if he wants to be where the judges want to see him. The outer zone, though, he filled it extremely well. So he's fine there. He comes out to another outer zone at this point here before bringing the nose back down. And this is the part I talked about. You'll see James McManaway in the lead position. Watch those. Look, for 50 metres, it seemed, he was on the handbrake to settle that car down. Of course, really slippery underfoot. Yeah, coming back through to grab that final clipping point really well. Fanger Dan right there as well. As they finish off the run, the first half of this battle. Fanger Dan Woolhouse to lead them out second time around. So EFI and Turbo, the engine builders for the JDM team. The chicken man out of the mighty Manawa 2. That's the place we're going to next for our next rounds. Rounds three and four, but right now it's round two. Run two, Fanger Dan leads the way and he's already created a gap. Look at the angle that he's providing. So James McManaway in the chase position this time. Fanger Dan, big smoke show. We've lost McManaway further back. There he is, picking back up again as Fanger fills out that out of zone nicely, comes through that oil spill and right out to the clipping point. 
As he enters the final turn, washes nice and wide to fill out that clipping point on the final corner as well. McManaway, a few car lengths further back. Let's just see if we can try and pick up what happened to McManaway in the part of the centre section. So this one here is to see who goes up against Connor Halligan in the 16th, Fangadan Woolhouse. A good start to the lap. He's up towards the cone area. We watch him switch. Where is McManaway? Just big smoke show from Fanger. I'm wondering if James managed to get lost in the smoke there. And once again as well, big smoke show, big handbrake into the final turn. McManaway did a good job catching back up given the uh, the distance that was between him through the centre section. Well, it's going to come down to the judges. Of course, we've got three incredible judges here with the D1NZ. It's Andrew Rumba, Joel Counter and JT Farido. And one, two, three strikes in the favour of the mighty Mustang. Welcome back, buddy. Uh, a little icky out there. Oh, yeah, man, the track temperatures have changed and um, it was so grippy. Man, it was grippy. Um, you know, I was trying to work the car out to the clipping points and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just really driving away from them. So did my best. Um, I got, you know, I was pretty close to um, James there in the chase. And yeah, I think he made a few little mistakes. I made a few little mistakes as well. So, but um, I did a pretty good lead run. Pretty happy with it. Got the W, that'll do. All right, let's move on. Hey, James, I, I was just uh, talking to Link, Luke about that. H how bad is the, the oil drop there? It's pretty big. It's almost, yeah, from one corner to the next. So it's just, there's stuff everywhere. This is probably the best words to say. Yeah, but no, nah, wicked ba battle with Fanger again. I've seemed to come up from every time <laughs> for the last couple of years, but still loving it, enjoying it. Nah, nice work, mate. Thank you, guys. It was shocking out there, <laughs> says Mungrel McManaway. All right, Fanger Dan fills a second to last spot. And it's time now to have a look at our next battle, which should be Adam Davies versus Jared Olcrona. Jared Olcrona in the parts trade, Lexus New Zealand, Link ECU, Harley Engines and Motorsport, one GZFE V12. This thing here is a screamer. It's twin turbo developing well over 1,000 horsepower, but he's going up against some other engine that you are probably the biggest fan of. That is Team DSR's Adam Davies. He's in the Napa Auto Parts Mimico 180. And what sort of motor is he running? It's got the Green Brothers 20B under the hood of that. Probably, well, not probably, it is the best sounding engine out there. But let's not take it away from the sound of that 1GZ V12 of Jaron Olive Krona. And uh, Adam, I mean, he's been pretty solid over the last couple of years. Jaron. Uh, was getting getting to grips with the S14 and they've changed to that Lexus now as well. He did have the spin in qualifying, so hopefully the dry conditions are going to work out for Jaron this afternoon. Well, the rubber's certainly for dropping out of these cars, isn't it? See it all over the straight here as we come down into the scrub box. And interesting comments from Fanger Dan about the grip levels. Uh, obviously, there was no grip yesterday, uh, negative grip. And this afternoon, they had the car set up probably to try and get as much grip out of it and he's gone out there with too much grip and he's just you know saying it's driving away from the clipping points yeah of course so one of the things you'd look at doing is generally dropping tire pressures or lifting them up to assist you as, as well as the other things that you can do but tire pressures is probably one of the main games that you play tire pressures too low you've got far too much grip out there and uh, can make the car a handful. You can actually see in this situation, Jaron's trying to get as much lock as he can on the front wheels to actually generate more grip for the front wheels. Nobody generally gives enough um, uh, enough sort of importance on actually generating heat into the front wheels. So I think that each driver's allowed 30 seconds in the scrub box, might be a little bit less, and uh, Jared certainly using up all he can. The higher qualifier will set the lead lap the first time in this place here will be Adam Davies. Adam Davies qualifying in 14th position. Another shocker for him. He'd expect to be a lot higher up. Jaron Olive Kroner in 19th position. Jaron came back uh, first time we've seen him back this season after a couple of years building this new car. So 20B Rotary up against V12 Toyota and Adam Davies gets all the way out to that clipping point in the first corner. Good smoke show, but Jaron's right there in that Lexus as they come through to the centre part of the section. All right, let's see how these cars handle that oil spill in the middle of it. Jaron with a little correction through the middle. 
as they come through to finish the lap. So hard to the uh, outside of it. You can see, I think it looked like a cone that was disappearing off into the distance. And a big correction for Jarano Okrona. It must be difficult to come through into that section there with the amount of dust that's down and the slipperiness of the oil underneath. I know each driver's been given a sighting lap, but at right now, this has created a 10-0 advantage in the favour of the Riker 24-7 Mimico 10 DSR machine of Adam Davies. Here's a look at Adam Davies' lead with Jared and Chase. Yeah, so like a real good start, like I say, right out to that clipping point, some good angle, big smoke as well. Jaron did a real good first half, and then just as it came in there, it looked like he had to do a, a slight bobble through the middle there, and a, almost a reinitiation in behind, and then through all that oil spill, a wheel off there as well for Jaron, grabs a cone, over-rotates, and comes completely out of drift towards the end in straight lines. That will be, like you say, Steve, a 10-0 advantage to Adam Davies. Now, obviously, things to look at is the lead driver did lead Jaron off into, because he also put a wheel off, but the biggest mistake is when you crash your drone. <laughs> so, that looks like a part of the... Yeah, so that code. threw off, so yeah. I think that was either a part that broke off, it's the right-hand side of the uh, rear bumper, but we'll go down and, uh, well, will he be asked to go and pick up a drone? So Jaron Olive Krona leading out this time from Adam Davies. Nice early initiation of the chase from Adam Davies there. And Jaron, his turn to do the lead around, put the big smoke show on his nice and wide. They're too wide, in fact, dropping a wheel off. Here maybe Adam two. Davies trying to close the gap up. Brett Bumpers trying to exit with both of these cars here. Jaron on the loud pedal again. This is a hard corner as well. As they both come through to finish, which way are we going to go? Advantage for our assuming Adam Davies. What a fantastic engine noise coming from both those cars. Uh, it's actually one of those things I've been looking forward to is seeing these guys come together from, by way of engine noise. And the best thing would be is if Jaron was to maybe get rid of the twin turbos because that thing would scream like a Formula One car. All right, here we go. This is the replay of the second half of the battle between Jaron Olive Krona and Adam Davies. Olive Krona, it looked like a really nice start until this part here happened. Smokes that uh, little orange cone. So it looks like one wheel off, could be more as they go through that part there. And Adam Davies doing a good job holding the drift in behind Jaron as well. That parts trade Alexis always looks fantastic. Actually, every car that comes out of the Olive Krona workshop always presented very well. Washes nice and wide to pick up that final clipping point, but Adam Davies right there with the proximity. Well, it's going to go down to the judges' call with Andrew Redwood, with Joel Counter and JT Fodido, and it's going to be one, two, three strikes in favour of Adam Davies. Well, a little, a little bit of good luck. Uh, a little bit of good luck, yeah. I think I've needed it, but it's a pretty scrappy lead run, to be honest. I uh, wasn't very happy with it after the practice I had, but um, uh, I'm happy to get the win and not be knocked out in the 24 this time. Yeah, I've got to ask the question. You have been struggling of late, uh, it, albeit only round two. What are you putting it down to? Uh, I don't know. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Just, just come to grips with the car. Some, some days you're on, some days you're off, I guess, but hopefully I can be on today. All right, through the top 16, mate. Cheers, Stephen. Yeah, that's Adam Davies. Now, now get ready. Jordan Joyce, top qualifier out there up against Calvin. He qualified with a 95. Let's go. Let's go, all right. And it will be Jordan Joyce who takes place, takes his place on the right-hand side of the track with Calvin Clark sitting next to him. So they are going to go up and send them out to give them a sight lap. So we will see Jordan Joyce. Now, what tyres is Jordan Joyce on? I know they were looking at running those Valinos at one stage, and of course, yeah, Valino on the front bonnet. Straight out of Carl Thompson's workshop. And uh, those things are the stickiest tyres in probably the world of drift. Yeah, and I mean, we go back to it once again. We talk about Jordan Joyce qualifying top of the field in the wet surface. Uh, and uh, congratulations on Jordan for his number one P1 qualifier as well for the first time. And Calvin Clark coming through the hard way through the top 24, picking up that win against Kurt Blackie a little earlier on. Is the grip level going to catch him out like it did to Fanger Dan? He made mention of it. And hopefully they were listening carefully. Put some more tyre pressure in there, maybe take a bit of toe out out of the back of that drift car and dial the grip out of it somewhat. But of course we are live on Sky Sport, we are live on KO, Fox Sport as well and Motorsport TV. I know one of the poop, one person will be watching from the UAE and I'll just take the opportunity to say happy birthday for yesterday to Jesse Greenslade. Jesse Greenslade a regular with the D1NZ until moving to, uh, to, to go and hang out with the, where's he, Dubai I think? 
yeah. enjoying time over there. Probably bought himself a new Porsche or something. Well, let's get some heat into the tyres. Let's get ready to set them loose again. This is our top qualifier, JJ. It is Jordan Joyce. He's going up against Calvin Clark. Smith Industries Limitless Tyres. It's an S13 with an RB30 under the bonnet. So traditionally for a long time he had the SR20 in there, didn't he, Steve? Yes, he's put his big boy pants on. He's gone for the big motor. Let's see how he can go with that one there. Two of them lined up so, um, side by side in the pits this weekend as well. And like you mentioned in the earlier, the top qualifier out of the two will lead them out for the first half of the battle. It is Jordan Joyce, Jordan, Jordan Joyce, sorry, your P1 qualifier, Calvin Clark. 16 is where he qualified. Jordan picks up the pace and initiates nice and early before the section even starts. He needs to wash wide here to pick up that clipping point, which he's done pretty well late in the piece. And Calvin Clark there as well. Big smoke show from Jordan Joyce as he makes his way into the centre part of the drift section. You talk about the speed that the Valino's put out, and you can just see the grip level he's got and absolutely gapping Calvin. Now that might get... Oh, is that a straight line for Calvin? Now we'll have to take a look at the Dale White team replay for that. Joyce comes through to finish off strongly, and Calvin comes through as well. Plenty of smoke from the back of the Valinos. So Jordan Joyce there, yeah, nice early initiation, which actually caught Calvin out a little bit. Calvin nice and wide on the arc, though, in that chase position. And is he going to close up that gap there? See Jordan Joyce filling that out of zone. And keep your eye on that car. Try to shallow up to close up the proximity to Calvin, and then he wash wide a little bit there. Lost in the smoke somewhat from there on in, and it almost looked like somewhat, yeah, it didn't look like the drift was actually fully maintained. Well, obviously, they'll go back to the second part, and uh, just got a message from, Cal uh, from uh, Calvin's uh, biggest supporter and biggest person for clipping his ears if he gets it wrong. Cole Armstrong, hard at work, but still watching on Sky Sport, watching his man right out there leading the way, which is Calvin Clark in the Smith Industries. Limitless tyres, Nissan S13, RB30 under the bonnet. Uh, just four wheels off for Calvin. You can't see it, it blends in with the green, but a pass has happened. So, yeah, Jordan Joyce has gone through and made the pass on it. Calvin Clark just pushing so hard for that first corner. He needed to make the, uh, or push the issue to try and make a mistake from behind. And unfortunately, what he's done is wash wide and put four wheels off. And Jordan Joyce, after qualifying P1, will be a happy man. What happened here, Calvi? So Calvi starts grabbing his gears, going through them. He's got a good start to his lap. Gets the angle on. Everything seems to be going right at this way, at this time here. And then he's like, I want to hit that outside clip. I want to hit all of it. He's just carrying so much speed. I mean, I wonder if there's something like the, knowing the Valinos and how sticky they are, and, you know, watching how fast Jordan Joyce was in the lead run. Calvin knew he had to keep the pace right up. If anything, he wanted to probably pull it back and slow it down. Jordan Joyce making the pass. Coming through to finish the run strongly. Calvin Clark there as well, making it through. So we go down to McIver for a result down in Pitts. It is Jordan Joyce on the left, Calvin Clark on the right. And one, two, three strikes in the favour of Jordan Joyce. He's gone through to the next round. Well, top qualified does the job. Uh, congratulations, mate. Yeah, thanks, man. It's good getting some wins under our belt, too. Ah, <laughs> uh, Calvin gave it a nudge. So what happened on that last run? Uh, yeah, I guess he must be trying to get it nice and close, and he's a little bit underpowered compared to some of the other cars, so he really does push. I like battling with Calvin. He's always a good driver. Can I ask you a question? You know Ricky Bobby, right? Yeah, yeah. He had as much on his windscreen as you do, and I'm just wondering, I'm just, I'm just going to say, Ricky Bobby, do you like Fig Newtons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you see through that windscreen? Yeah, yeah only just, only just. <laughs> do you love Fig Newtons, though? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, mate. You're through to the 16. Cheers, man. Thank you. Oh. Well, through to the 16. I think we've actually got our top 16 now. That was... Uh... Let's go and find out what Calvin Clark had to say after his uh, fun times. Yeah, he had nothing to say because he took off. Nothing, nothing to say, took off. Let's take a look at the tree. 
Well, let's have a look and see where they've got to so far. So, Jordan Joyce, he's already grabbed his spot on the eight. He went up against Garvin Clark, Michael Thorley versus Dave Stephen, Luke Fink versus Sean Potros, and Sam West going up against Ben Jenkins. On this right-hand side of the tree, we've got Connor Halligan up against Fanger Dan Woolhouse. We've got Troy Jenkins up against Bruce Tannock. Clayton Daly will take on Adam Davies, and Jeremy Slammett up against Case Pullen Burry. That is how you'll link top 16 line up. We're looking for the top eight, thanks to Mimico. They're talking yeah. about Mimico. There's a Mimico car out on the line right now, and that is Dave Stedman. RB32 under the bonnet of Stedman's car is Michael Thorley in the NZ GT Radials Valvoline. Little, that's the uh, C33 Laurel. Now, where's the 180? Which is a spare car for Michael Thorley, isn't it? It's only 500 horsepower versus 850 horsepower of RB Beauty in the form of a RB32. It's in a San Silvia of the Napa Mimico Man. He'll be wanting to get into the Mimico top. 16, 8, 8. Top 8, yes. So Dave Stedman, without having a 24th qualifier, got to walk through to the top 16 for this battle up against Michael Thorley, who does have a national D1NZ Pro Sport Championship to his name. Same uh, championship that, of course, a few other drivers that we've seen. We've sort of obviously seen the Jenkins guy. They did really well. Uh, the Pullen Burries, they went through. Bruce Tannock. Again, we talk about the higher qualifier gets to go through and set the lead lap. And the higher qualifier in this situation was Michael Thorley, eighth place versus ninth place. Let's see what Thorley can do as he leads out. Again, grabbing some gears and they will kick themselves into life. Big angle for the Laurel. Top 16 battle, lots of speed by Michael Thorley, does a lot of drifting in the off season, setting himself up to the centre part of the lap. And Dave Stedman, he's got some really good proximity as well on Thorley, doing a nice aggressive chase early on here. And as they go through that oil spill section, you can see the dust fly up, and Thorley, he's doing a good lead run. As I say that, he tucks his nose down probably a little bit too early, he's going to look to wash wide to that final clipping point. They come through to complete the run, so that proximity for the majority of the run was really good for Dave Stedman. And how good to see Thorley out there in the Laurel. Doing a great lead run for him to be able to chase. Well, they comes through and he sets himself up nicely at this point here. He's running that high line, doing exactly what he needs to do. You can see he's going through just hard on the gas, but keeping the line really nicely. Not making too many corrections, setting himself up to come through. Here comes Dave Stedman. Dave's trying to close the door. You can see that little bit of to and fro coming through as they come down to the slippery section. Yeah, and having a good look at the second half of that run as well. Nice and smooth from Thorley up front. Like you say, no corrections that are evident at all from that Laurel up the front. Stedman, though, right there as well. A great battle from these two drivers. Well, second half of the battle time it is, and it's Dave Stedman versus Michael Thorley, with Stedman now leading out. It'll go down to the hands of launch master Willie. Willie says, I'm looking at you, kids. Off you go. So Thorley gets the jump. We know how much power we've got with 850 versus 500. And Dave Stedman, he just sort of throws it just so majestically into its drift. Yes, yeah, so having a little dab in the handbrake in the first corner there, Stedman, to get himself out to that clipping point. He's had a little dab as well, which you're allowed to do through the centre part as well. A little gap forming there, filling that out his own nicely on the way, and a gap getting opened up towards the final corner. Man, that was a long drag on the handbrake coming through into that final turn, but gets on it and uh, will come through to finish the lap. One of the things I noticed was just how long he was on the handbrake. I know that um, Andrew Redwood was saying, I just want to see basically dabs coming through into that centre section, but watch this. I talk about the majesticness coming through. It was a beautiful start to his lap. Yeah, so the Dale IT replay, it was almost, uh, well, it, actually what, what would be interesting to see if it was before or after the section started as well from Stedman there, a little drag there. So looking for that long drag you said as well, Steve, on the way into here. And there it is, you can see. Now they don't mind, the judges didn't mind having the use of the handbrake into the final turn. Most of the drivers that I spoke to said that you probably wouldn't need it as much coming into there, but of course most of the drivers didn't expect to see a whole lot of powder down there for an oil drop. Let's go down and find out who Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter and JT suggested would be the winner and it will be Dave Stedman who's going to go through to the next round. You've got to keep your eye on me, Stedman, otherwise you don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> oh, man, that was that was pretty epic. Managed to 
stay pretty close to Michael through that whole section. Uh, luckily, the, the oil dumps pretty well cleared, cleared yeah. up towards that end section. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, starting to get used to this track, and that's the real first real battle I've had. So pretty pretty. Just just one question. It looked both runs for you looked really consistent, like you were just dialed in. Yeah, we're getting there. It hasn't always been that way. Uh, there's so much grip out there, so we have taken a little bit of grip out of the rear, and that's certainly helped. All right, see you in the next round. All right, it's not the lucky Laurel today for Michael. I said, what's this guy goes as Laurel, Laurel, but uh, not not lucky today, huh? No, it's not a David and Goliath story today, no. <laughs> She's a bit underpowered, but um, the Valvoline NZ Laurel, I mean, it got us out there, got us some points on the board, and um, I know we've got some things to do for Manfield, eh? How much, how much of a beast is it to drive, or how different to what you're used to? It's more fun. It, it's, it's not as stressful, but it doesn't have the power, so, you know. You've got to have fun, Mike. Got to have fun, otherwise there's no point being there, eh? Yeah, I know. I know Rob from Valvoline's here. He'd be happy. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Well, Hampton Downs, round two of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship, part of round seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. Our next battle of the day. Sean Potros. So, if you missed it earlier, Sean Potros and his team, he went out there and qualified. All he did is left the line initiated and then got a one-point run to get him onto the battle tree, the top 24, and overnight they had to deal with a cracked block. So the head came off that car. They thought it was a head issue. Ended up being a cracked block, and uh, thanks to HRE and JT Performance, they've got that car back out there today. He's already through to the top 16. Well, he had to deal with a... Uh with a very broken engine, now he's got to deal with a very angry Aussie. And the form of the Mr. Controversy, it is Luke Fink. And Luke in the good car this time. He's not in that R32 that we... No, he's in the bad car. The 32's the good car. It creates amazingness, entertainment and controversy. And that's what I love. So the 180 SX from out of JDM Racing. EFI and Turbo on the side of that. Supercharged LS. He qualified in P4 yesterday, Luke Fink, and uh, hasn't been without trouble as well. They've had power steering issues, and into the scrub box he goes. Now, talking to Kenny Ruddle, he was saying about just how important this, uh, this track here is for actually generating heat into your front wheels. So it's quite an important track for that because it's actually going to help you to get heat in the front. But one thing that Luke did was like, I don't care, I'm just going to come out and line up. Let's see, where did Luke Fink qualify in fourth position? Sean Potros essentially dead last. 940 horsepower for the Aussie, 800 horsepower for Potros. We know how aggressive Potros can be. We know how controversial my bro Luke Fink can be. Australia, get behind your man, New Zealand. Here's ours in the chase position. We're in the black up against the Aussie. And wow, that is a great initiation from Fink up front. Very aggressive, massive smoke piling on before this, the run even started, or the section even started. And here comes the proximity from Potros. Look at them closing the door right up. This is the closest battle we've seen so far today. Wow, that is a way to chase, but it might have put himself off. What's happened to Luke Fink? Well, big mistake for Fink towards the end there. We have to take a look at the replay to see what's happened. I don't know if there was a reinitiation from Potros in the middle of the run as well. No problems. Let's have a look and see. So a great start, and this was such a... I mean, you can see just how high up the track he is, really filling out that zone. Bang, hits it through here, comes through and sets this one up nicely. And here comes Sean Potros, slightly shallower line, and comes through and closes up. I don't even think there was contact at this point. They're so close. No doubt that we'll see a mark on the... Who would know with that car? But what Here's happened the here? Mistake from Potros in the rear. There looked like it's hard to say whether he maintained the drift. And then just a big push. Not sure what happened. I mean, the grip levels. We heard Fanger speak about it. We saw it for ourselves as well. And I'm sure we'll be able to catch up with Luke at some stage to see what's happened there. I'm too. I'd be too scared to ask him. All right. Well, he sends him down again. It's Sean Potros. It's your turn to lead out. Well. Luke Fink is going to plant one on the door, I can tell already. Look how close he is. There it is. He's already made contact. The aggressive match is Potros very shallow through the first part. Uh, oh, oh, no. What happened? Okay, that has to be something to do with what happened in the first lap. Oh, my gosh, Luke. What is going on? 
don't take the return road. It, it'll destroy every other part of your car underneath. So interesting. Oh, I'd like to see what's happened here. Good to see him able to drive back up onto the circuit. He left there at a rate of speed. And he'll send it well, he's, he's going to offer a whole heap of it. Maybe he could go up and hook a couple of O's through this part here just to clean this off. <laughs> That's how I get back it in. Oh, he's so entertaining. Hook an O. <laughs> All right, let's have a look and see what. <laughs> Wheels, the steering wheel out the steering window. Out the window, yeah. So he was That's nice and aggressive. Points as they went to initiate. And yeah, it's knock knock, who's there? Not an yeah, army. Potros was very shallow through the first part, and Fink, just, it's almost the same, like you said, Steve, the same thing happened, it straightened up, it had a big push mid-turn, I wonder if that's a steering issue, he has been battling that all weekend, it's not the first time they've had a uh, power steering <laughs> issue on that, and it just straightened up. Shout out to Tiana, watching at home in Australia, watching her man. And good to see Luke Fink back out here in New Zealand. So down on the grass as well. I wonder if that's a sign of uh, knowing that there's some oil or something coming out. No, they're happy with it. All right, let's just go down to Stephen McIver. He's going to have <laughs> all the excitement down there. So much excitement. No power steering. Both runs. That's, that's why he went off. Talked to his crew down here and they said, like tr trying to steer a steer a car with a piece of concrete so that's pretty much uh, what it is uh, the power steering issue has been the issue and uh, that's why but should we just uh, wait for the official confirmation shall we uh, who cares you just make it up well okay so we put Sean Potro through I'm assuming yeah, because of that I run. Think so. right. I'll tell you what I'll, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna split it around this time I'm gonna go the other way first I'll come to you in a minute Sean uh, I, I, I know you you were a little bit cranky coming into this just because of it, but uh, did you think it the power steering would go that badly, buddy? Uh, I had no power steering at all. Yeah. We, we, we sort of hail married it with a bunch of stuff before we came out. Just coming into the last corner, literally the steering wheel did that. Oh my gosh, it's, it's yeah, totally I'm, bent. I'm wrenching on as hard as I can, literally bent the wheel on the last corner uh, in my lead. I held on as tight as I could, I'd really tried my best. And then in the chase, same deal, I'm right there, but as soon as you start left foot braking on top of not having power steering, I bent the steering wheel again, straight up the course in a rate of knots too, it went flying. Oh mate, I'm, I'm sorry for that, but for a moment it was like a god moment you were steering without a wheel, but uh, nice to see you keep cranking, man. Yeah, it's frustrating, but what do you do, that's motorsport. It is, mate. Well done, Lee. Let's go over to the man that will uh, go through on the back of that. That's uh, Sean Potros, who, for the second uh, second run in a row, quite quickly, uh, Sean, uh, your opposition have fallen apart. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did tell me before we went out that his power steering was playing up, so, and it's like he hasn't had two consistent laps, so I was aware of it, even though um, on the lead in the middle section, for, oh, we were close, we were door-to-door, -door, like, yeah, that was mean. And then, yeah, as we went into the last corner, I'd seen his steering... Yeah, I said that's gone out. As you've seen, the steering wheel is like a banana, so... <laughs> you must yeah. be hanging for just two good runs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, keep going, man. You're rolling on. Well, and we continue. So, Luke Fink, certainly a little bit of work to do. See, what he should have done has not bought that car out and just continued to run the R32. Look at it down there, all its beauty. Well, half beauty, because I cleaned half of it the other day, is to take the MIG. So, what has happened here? I'm hearing things. Yeah, I'm hearing the same things in my ear, Steve. And speculation. Okay, Here's hang on. Result. Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, Jake. One more time. What do they want to do? Destroy Luke Fink? He's just going to wash out again. Now, why? What did Sean Potros did wrong? What did you say? Now, so, you. F I thought there was a straight line or a potential. So, if we look at um, Luke's lead run. Thanks All right, we're having a look at this point here. So, we're coming through at this point here. We're looking for the mistake that has caused the OMT. So everything's fine through here. And really good filling the outer zone. There's Luke Fink there as well. Potros was nice and shallow. 
to try and close up that proximity. Now keep your eye on the back car, Potros there. Oh, he kept, it looked like he maintained that drift. And then... Now they had to be mistaken, both of them then. Because that was zero, zero. Zero, zero. Okay, then we go to this one here. Okay, I'm gonna go straight to, there they are. Okay, Potros handbrake in front of Luke, resulting in Luke going off track. There we go. Okay, so what the what they've determined is that there was a handbrake up here, and when he's come through, and and that because of the handbrake right at that point there, that has caused uh, that has caused Luke Fink to actually take evasive action and send himself off track. Thank you very much. This is what I love about our judges sending through the messages because other people would be going like, hey, what's going on here? That should have been this, that and the other. Straight through with the information. Thank you to Joel Counter. Thank you to Andrew Redwood. And JT, you're always the man. Let's get ready talking about going for the man. It's the next battle up. So Sam West from out of Tauranga. Qualified in P5. And then another familiar car. We thought we weren't going to see them this year, but it's great to see them back. Ben Jenkins in the Toyota GD86 2JZ powered. 750 horsepower. It is 2J versus 2J. The other one in the 180. Sam West showing 800 horsepower. It's so good, as you mentioned, to have the Jenkins team back. Of course, the Jenkins team sponsored by this weekend TM Electrical. Troy Ben, welcome back. I mean, when it's in your, your back lawn, essentially, almost, it's uh, it's nice and easy for them to come along, and it's great that they've put the time aside to be able to do that, and it's, uh, yeah, certainly was. I was a little bit gutted when I saw that we wouldn't see the Jenkins for the season, but here we are. Well, they're back, and let's hope that they enjoy it. So, Sam West, what's going on here? You're on fire? <laughs> a little bit of extinguisher work going into the back of the 180. Do you know how much crew he brought along with him this weekend? How many? None. Ah. Oh. Oh, he's got out of the car. It's at the back. So I'm wondering if that's just a tyre fire, just some sort of rubber or something, or is it... Oh, come on, mate. Oh! You just got taught a lesson. So one of the things that often happens with drift cars, and they get in a lot of trouble for it, is, and I'm not saying that this is the case, but it probably is, is you have rubber build up from that much drifting. And what happens with rubber is that obviously if you get too hot under there, is that rubber can make other rubber burn. What happens is you get a build up of rubber, of tire rubber inside your guards and you're supposed to clean it all off. No crew, no clean off, yeah. fire. Scariest thing in motorsport? So now that we, uh, yeah, absolutely fire is uh, the, certainly the thing that I've always been most scared of behind the wheel of a race car. Uh, now Sam West, he'll get the two minutes. Well, he is mechanical, if he wishes. Or is he just going to scrub up and, and Who's send it? Help him? Just send it. Now, of course, who would help him? The uh, RHP team, because he's been next to them. Oh, hey, goodness, I just realised. Thanks, thanks, Joan, for coming back after your uh, evasive manoeuvre and kissing the green stuff. There it is, the TM Electrical's GT86. The yellow accents on that one there of Ben Jenkins. And Troy Jenkins, you'll see him a little bit later on as well, in the other 86. Emma, well, let's, uh, let's go and find out what's happening in the pits. I'm sure lots of excitement. Stephen yeah, McIver. Yeah, well, excitement too for Connor Halligan because he qualified P2. And Connor's got, you know, he loves smiling about this, but but comes with a little bit of pressure this time around, buddy. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, it was nice to get a good result. It's been um, last season and uh, the first round was, um, yeah. Yeah, it's been a bit of an uphill battle for us, so it's nice to get a good result and um, hopefully we can keep going, you know. Well, you got the fanger beside you. Uh, how, do you how do you approach someone like that with that much grunt? Uh, I mean, just the same as every other battle, I guess. You just don't <laughs> let it get to you and um, just try to put it on the door. That's the, that's the main you, thing. You know he's listening beside you. He can hear through the speakers, right? So you're not going to give him anything. Yeah, 100%. That's all good. I'm sure he'd say the same thing. <laughs> well done, mate. Go well. Cheers, mate. So there is Connor Halligan from out of Topor and previous pro sport winner as well. Moving up into the pros and showing the pros as well that he can qualify among the best, finishing in P2. All right, so I understand he doesn't want to change his tyres. He just wants to get some heat into the front. That's not how you heat the front up. That's how you heat the back up again. 
all I can say is go and get some fire extinguisher ready at the tail end. Let's go and see what's happening down with Stephen McIver this time. Yeah, we'll just quickly get to Troy Jenkins before Brother Ben gets here. Nice to see you back on the grid. Yeah, it's really good. Eh? It's great to be at our home track, Hampton Downs, and um, beautiful day. Uh, the, it's, it's sort of certainly turned it on today instead of yesterday. We had a bit of rain. How do you think Ben goes? Uh, ben will go really well here. No worries at all, mate. Well, easy as. We'll you had easy. to say that. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> go I'm well, betting. mate. I'm betting on him. <laughs> We talk about it with the Pull and Burries, and it's exactly the same with the Jenkins team. The biggest supporter is their brother themselves. And let's see how the brother can do this time. It is Sam West who leads out the front with the Jason Otis Builders. West plastering 180. 2J under the bonnet versus 2J in the form of the TM Electrical GT86 of Ben Jenkins. Yeah, so Sam doing a good job up front here early on. He's three-wheeling his way through the circuit. And a little bit of a correction there. And a little bit of uh, lack of proximity from Ben Jenkins in the chase position there. So they'll come through to finish the lap. I want to make sure that there's no fire under the back end of the West car. Well, let's have a look at the replay of this run. Nice early initiation from Sam West there. He's pushing his car. He's a couple of metres off that first clipping point. Ben Jenkins, he is right there to start with. And then this is where... Sam West just powers away a little bit. Looks like a big drag on the handbrake and behind from Ben Jenkins. And through that all patch they go. And another drag from the lead car this time. But a lack of proximity, if anything, from Ben Jenkins. Pretty good lead run from Sam West. And they'll come through to finish. It's the second half of the battle time now. It will be Sam West versus Sam West. If you look at the top of the shot, which one do you think is prettier? I think that Ben Jenkins and Sam West is better, better looking of the two. Oh yeah, whole lot of 86s <laughs> flying through the background there. Of course, you can tune in tomorrow. We'll come down to the track for round seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. But right now, it's time to see what Ben Jenkins can do. As ben flies in. Initiates into the section, and away he goes there. Sam West looking for that proximity, but Ben do doing a good job up front. He's going to fill out that out of zone on the way through the centre part of the section. He does that nicely as well, so the proximity is built here and far apart for Sam West this time. Very similar run between the, both of these two drivers on their lead and chase runs. Be a hard one to choose as they head on down into the pits and uh, they will come through. So it will head down. Let's have a look at the replay first before they go up and catch up with Stephen McIver. Uh, yeah, same thing again, both uh, very similar lead and chase runs from both these drivers. The uh, proximity was there in the first old corner, Sam West tried to take a big dive there on Ben Jenkins through the centre part. I thought a couple Jenkins. of correct corrections maybe for Sam West. Yeah, Coming behind through. him. And then a couple of drags on the handbrake, very shallow into the final corner, so both good lead runs. Lead first lead, probably go 50-50 there, they'll have to take a look at the mistakes in the chase position, Steve. Well, I love drifting, so I always call if I could for an OMT. Which way is it going to go? Let's see if he's uh, going to go for the uh, for a spinner. I think he's been quite the batsman. I think he's going to knock it for a six. Sam West, nice and warm inside that car there. Just fanning himself off. Oh, it is going to be left for Ben Jenkins or right for Sam West. That's a hard, hard one for the judges. Obviously, when it gets to this position here and we're waiting, that's a lot of that comes down to the deliberation of our judges. Of course, three the guys decisions. on the hot seat this weekend. We've got Andrew Redwoods, we've got Joel Counter, and we have Jarius Farido. Oh, he's still warming up, just polishing that. There it is, there's the result. So, what went down at the start, please? Extinguishers thinking of fire, people worried. We were a bit of a hot mess at the start, <laughs> you could say that. Benny actually looked over and said, get out of your car. And I looked back and I could just see the whole back of the car on fire. So, uh, yeah, we got out pretty quick and, yeah, we start off hot and we end hot, I think. <laughs> oh, there's the quote of the day. Start off hot, end up Well done, mate. You're going through. Let's go have a quick talk to Ben. Because it's so, so nice to see the Carter Tire Services 86 is back and Troy's not too far away. Ah, oh, mate. Bit rusty? 
No, nah, definitely not rusty. I'm never rusty. I've probably done more driving than I've ever done having a round off. But um, hey, hats off to Sam. A little bit of uh, excitement for everyone at home. A little bit of a fire. They put it out, re-scrub. That's drifting. You know, we get straight back into it. So, hey, look, I wouldn't be here without one man, Team Electrical, who's uh, jumped on board for both the TJM Made Sixes uh, this weekend. And honestly, he's my pit crew. He's my, one of the crew chiefs in our team. And we literally wouldn't be, be here without him. So. Massive thanks to Tom McNaught from Team Electrical for um, putting us back in the seats. I'm just, I had a ball this weekend, no pressure, just out here to have a whole lot of fun. So, yeah, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you at Manfield with a little bit, maybe a bit of a different spin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Apparently he's joining us in the pit lane. He wants my job. Fair play too. All right, get out of here. Uh, so stick around. More to come. It's the, the pros and rep code T1NZ live from Hampton Downs. Yeah! <laughs> Well, it is round two of the Repco Z1NZ National Drifting Championship here at Hampton Downs Motorsport Park in the north Waikato of New Zealand, about an hour south of Auckland Central. A great place to come and check out some of the fastest cars in Aotearoa. And a special welcome along to all our international viewers from around the world if you are tuned in welcome along to Hampton Downs Motorsport Park we'll take a quick look at the reverse section so we see the drivers head down the straight here they'll make their way to the right hand side of the track before throwing it sideways and trying to hold on to a beautiful arc on the top from there they will bring the nose down head out to the right hand side you can see the cones and this one here that really tightens up you see the cone on the right hand side at this point here bang you want to grab that one before a quick transition to the left and you'll see them riding up over the ripple strips grabbing those now you want to bring the nose down at this point here washing back out to the right hand side again before just setting up across all that dust and oil of taylor james bang you hit those cones there again bring the nose back down get hard power out onto the right hand side hitting that clipping point right there avoiding that concrete wall on the right hand side and that's where you will come to finish that is a lap of the what that done by the pro drifters here of the red code z1 nz and it's probably one of the, the most daunting last corners in drifting you're coming back out there you're washing as wide as you possibly can to get to those clipping points or the clipping cones on the way out there but you've got a concrete wall coming at the same time you're sideways you've got as much grip as you can get out of your drift car I know that there was a couple of concerns. I know the track actually showed concern yesterday. They said, is this okay? They went through and spoke to the drivers themselves and said, are you guys okay with us? And they said, well, we're professional drifters. Of course we are, not a problem. A right, nice crowd building here at Hamden Downs Motorsport Park. As we take a quick look at the 86s, there's double duties going on. So the national circuit, hard, oh, you know what, half or oh. essentially you'll see highlights of this tomorrow of course they did a lot of damage yesterday all there goes young mallard heading through up over the hill these cars very even aren't they to watch racing and their nice tight racing oh, I, I they were setups. incredible what else is incredible is the d1nz the pro championship not too far away from our next battle of the day Welcome back. This is round number two of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It's ready for our next battle of the day. We are going through trying to find places in the top eight. And it's the right hand side of the tree time. Connor Halligan in the JOB. Jason Ober's builders car going up against Bangadan. Let's have a look who we've got. Um, Troy Jenkins will go up against Bruce Tannock. Leighton Daly will come up against Adam Davies. We've got Jeremy Slammer up against Case Pullenbury. That's how they line up in the right-hand side of the tree of the Link ECU Top 16. We're looking for the Mimico Top 8. 
As you can see, we've already got Jordan Joyce and Dave Steadman up there. One more time between Luke Fink and Potros, and the result between Sam West and Ben Jenkins. Now, I haven't heard from anyone whether or not Luke Fink is actually going to accept the OMT and he's going to try and go again. For me, I'd be saying a bit difficult, maybe not. Also gave them a little bit of time to try and fix any of the gremlins that's going to return their power steering to them. So, if anyone can do it, Luke Fink and the JDM team can. Oh, here's that next battle. This lined up on the line is Connor Halligan in the second position in qualifying. Daniel Woolhouse, very uncharacteristic, all the way down in 18th spot. Had to come through the top 24 to get himself this spot in the top 16. Will be in the chase position for the first half of this battle. Launchmaster Willie's down there at the Dale ITM start line, ready to send them off. Well, we will see how they go. Of course, driving the Ford Mustang RTR Spec 5D Castro. RTR. Century Batteries, our four times New Zealand Drift King. It is Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Nice new truck in the background too for Fanger. Come on, Willie. You know what to do. He goes, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. So they start hitting the gears as they head down the straight here. You'll see Connor Halligan kick it into life. Let's see when Fanger Dan will pull the trigger. So a nice wide arc from Connor Halligan, a great initiation there. And there's Fanger Dan right there in the smoke. Good proximity as well. Fills the outer zone really nicely. And then Fanger has closed the gap right up as they enter the centre part of the section. Fanger Dan on the loud pedal. Slight gap. What's going to happen as they come through into the final turn? You know that Fanger's going to really try to close up the door. A great lead. A fantastic chase. That's a good way to finish the first half of the battle between these two drivers. Connor Halligan in the lead. Fanger Dan gives chase. Of course, it'll be time to switch them around, set them up. Let's have a look at the replay. Oh yeah, look at the nice wide initiation. It's nice and early as well from Connor Halligan and it's a great arc right out to that clipping point and then he fills this outer zone really nicely right there where the cone is and Fanger Dan, look at the drive that he gets from that Mustang, closes the proximity right up onto Halligan as they enter the centre part. So of course Fanger Dan about 650 horsepower, he's actually got less horsepower in this car here than what the car in front has, sitting over a 700, but Fanger knows how to drive, knows how to get the best out of everything that, he's, that he is piloting. Let's have a look at the second half of the battle now. It is Woolhouse turn as he gets straight into life. Sentry batteries on the door, he's running the high line. So a good initiation as well, filling out that outer zone really nicely. Whereas Halligan, he's right there out of the smoke, he comes to close up the proximity. And a little correction maybe if you're being really nitpicky there, but the proximity actually much closer from Halligan than it was from Fanger Dan as they come into the final corner. So they come through and powers out. A couple of slight corrections, not much so for the chase driver, but what a great chase. He was right on the back bumper. Again, not easy. Let's have a look and see if we can deliberate through this replay. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be the judges on this one here. Fanger Dan there, nice early initiation. The section doesn't start till those cones there. So looks to get that clipping point, which he looks like he filled out. And then this outer zone as well, just as nicely as Connor Halligan did in the first time, right there. So it comes down to, uh, it's, what, I'm just looking for mistakes. Like mistakes are generally the thing that throw it away. I don't see a lot from Fanger. He comes through, but a bit of a hands break, drag. Everyone else has done it. Maybe it was uh, a more shallower line that actually gave Connor the ability to claim back that proximity, but who cares? That's exactly what drifting is for. Well, yeah, this is going to be a tough one. It's going to be interesting to see which way they go. They're going to have to pick very, like, you know, look into the details of those runs. It is. is he playing this? Oh, Fanger okay. Dan Woolhouse on the left and Connor Halligan on the right. Do you think it's tennis or table tennis? Okay. Okay, three strikes in the way of Connor Halligan. That's the exact response we need. Congratulations, two really good runs. Thank you. Yeah, it was. It was a close battle, I think. Um, I could see Fanger right behind me in my uh, leads. I was like, shit, I better um, make it happen, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I was pretty happy. A couple of things to tidy up, but, yeah. Yeah, there was a, you needed a slight correction in that last run? It was, yeah, a little bit. Um, a little bit of getting lost in the smoke and sort of just making a bit of a guess, you know, but next time, yeah. We'll Moving on. on. <laughs> All good. Cheers. Fanger, hey? What's going on? Oh, it must be a bit of a tough day in the office. Um, <laughs> but yeah, nah, qualifying was terrible yesterday for me and um, I knew we had it dialed in the wet. 
um, and it felt really good, man. I thought that lead run was was top notch, yeah. um, and I thought my chase was pretty good as well. You know, I thought maybe um, if there's anything, if there was a mistake from him and behind, and yeah, a couple were not quite quite wide enough. It would yeah, if it didn't go my way, it might be a rerun, but it's gone his way. Well, so well, let's just quickly talk about other really important things. Your son Jesse, I've been watching him on Insta, mate. Is he ready to hop in the car yet? Oh, yeah. Is he going to though, eh? He's definitely. He's got to race everything, and um, <laughs> oh, he makes me laugh every day, man. It's um, it's awesome. So that's yeah, important, right? Hopefully, he'll be the next um, the next little wee banger. <laughs> All right, thanks, mate. There you go. All right, so Connor Halligan goes through after qualifying P2. It's funny, you talk about, you used to go and talk about Tafanga about drifting, and he would be throwing hand signals about all the cool stuff. This time, the only thing he cares about is, you mention his little boy, and oh my gosh, is there nothing but pride, immense pride by a proud dad. Well, let's have a look at this one here. I mean, I guess it was such a hard one for the, for the judges to decide, and of course they went in the favour of. You mentioned it, you think it came down to proximity. Well, yeah, I mean, it's you saw actually the outer zone was filled a bit better by Halligan in the first corner there, is a little bit shallow on that one there. Fanger Dan, a couple of little corrections in the chase. Let's have a look through the final corner as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the only thing I can see there that Fanger may have made a mistake on was probably only the proximity. So the aggressiveness from Connor Halligan here. Let's have a look at his chase this time. And so I guess we look down at a few things like the proximity to the, I hate that word now, yeah. um, how close he got to the cones. And that but there, like, oh, geez, it was only, we're talking 300 mil. Now, of course, the angle that we're seeing things from is a very different, what do we got here? Uh, so they take another look. Is this the uh, the Potros Fink battle? This is oh, live. live. This is the Fink's back into it. Luke Fink is. Oh, don't you roll that? You keep that on. Okay, let's just park that up now. <laughs> So you mentioned it, Steve, straight away. You said if you were Luke Fink, was there some consideration knowing that that car's a handful, that he's going to go out there and, you know, he can hang on to a steering wheel. I'm sure he's got some pretty big muscles on those arms. And he just, yeah. I'm no, OK, he's broken the left front. Yeah. Right, uh, what the? A little bit of a hairy moment, actually. It looked like it was jumping up. And you mentioned that. Do you that think it's R the word. power of the EFI and turbos motor under there? Just calls it to break. Yeah, but then, of course, he's come off track a few times. So... Those tie rod ends or steering up, something's happened there that he's, I mean, we, they do probably want a little bit of toe out for some drive or some turning in. <laughs> That's one way to get some heat in the tyres. So let's have a look at what happened also. here. So Luke, he's such a machine, isn't he? So it's at this point here that he's probably trying to counter steer and he just can't get that thing ready to throw back the other way. Oh. Actually, that's already broken. Not sure if we can have another look at that. Man, that was scary. The side. Yeah, but it did. It got up on two wheels straight away. But I think that left front had actually broken halfway through the corner. I wonder if it's a, like they can hold on this one angle. I mean, Montross went through to finish off that run. Oh, surely they're going to just bin it. They're not should have bought the 32 out. What's all that stuff on the ground? Well, is he allowed to fix the car? Now, of course, talking of Kenny Ruddle, he said five minutes is for contact only. There was no contact. Was the, he was leading, so he can't, there was no contact or no, nothing that happened with the chase car that allowed him to do it. So I guess it comes down to, so they'll get two minutes under the rules, is that right? To fix a steering arm, potentially? I mean, you've had problems so, in, in your lead and your chase run the first time around, you now have a problem with your lead run. If you're Luke Fink, are you looking at pulling the pin or are you just going to send it again anyway? Man, pull the pin, it's not worth it. It's an, I mean, I think on the, on safety grounds, you just say no. And look, we're seeing, what's this, is this a car being released and a decision's been made? If Sean Potros goes and throws it sideways, I'd say we've, a decision has been made. Stephen McIver, what do you know? What's happening down there? The decision has been made. They've got two minutes, two crew members. They can't lift it. They're going to give it a nudge. I oh, just... What happened? You're too strong, mate. I bend everything with my bare hands. Do you think you can fix it in two minutes? Let's be blunt. <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. I can't see it from here. I can barely see anything. Well, well it's it's turning. It's turning. I don't know how many turns yet. To go turn it, turn it the other way. You know. I think, well, we'll give it a nudge. You've got two minutes. We'll see what happens. Tie rod. Tie rod, that's what you heard. Come on, Luke Fink. Kick the ball, KTB.
So, uh, let's another have another look. look. Yeah, keep an eye on that left front wheel. Now, he, he gets it in there, initiates, you can see it, it's on full right hand. Oh, this is. And then as he starts to go and turn to the left hand side again, it's, it's the other angle. Now, nah, this is great. Look at the gear, you can see it starting to wobble already. And then that's the hairy, oh, it just started getting up on its side. I wonder who shot this is. I think that's Chris Brockenshaw. He's a machine. Okay, here's another shot from George from Inspire You. Oh, he just starts washing out, and then he's like, oh, I'll just throw it. Wow. And then Potros. Good chance for him to get through. Let's just offer a little bit of television understanding on why the cameramen don't go for the rear driver. So one of the rules that Leo's chicken, Daryl Turk. Um, so one of the rules that they have uh, that we make sure that our cameramen do is if the chase car is to go off, it is up to the lead driver to finish the lap. Because of that, we quite often will have to follow the lead driver. Okay, so there has to, okay, the reminder, you can't do anything without an axle stand, can you? And then they've got to be given a certain amount of time. Oh my gosh, they're not lifting the car, they're going to use the jack to be the... Go for Joe was telling them, hurry up. It's definitely getting grip. Okay, so of course things to be aware of is of course they haven't actually used <laughs> Might have to mute the microphone down there <laughs> okay, You can see Sean Potros in the background there and we're gonna catch down with Stephen McIver He's got some more words from Luke. Well, yeah, I have been requested to come to Luke I figure I'd just explain to you all what's going on. It's very technical What we're doing is it's F and we're unaffing it yeah. by bending it back straight. Yeah, using, using the jack. probably fail miserably and we're going to crash. <laughs> but we're giving it a go. <laughs> huh? It's not going to get it. It's too close try to the end. It's tried. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> try harder. Put your hand back at it. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know what to do with it, but. You can't do it. You done? <laughs> I, I, right at the end. You can't straight. Can someone make a decision? Are you going to go or not? Oh, hang on. Yeah, where are we going for time, Joe? 45 You've got 45 seconds to go. And of course, that is Luke's, uh, Luke's spotter down there, and there is no so, one that um, supports him more. Huh? Wow. Oh, working away on the JDM Racing 180. So, Joe, <laughs> how much time we got to go? Uh, 22. 22 seconds, and okay, we're almost out of time, so, and the answer is, okay, we're giving it a go, yes, we're giving it a go, we're giving it a go, okay, here we go again, Sean, they're giving it a go, so let's go give it a go, one more run. The best part was Chicken just throwing that spanner in, oh wow. I mean, he, he's still got some steering there. It's obviously clearly turning, but it looks like how you can see how hard it is. All right, so from the words of Luke Fink, I'm probably oh. going to crash. That's entertainment. That's entertaining. Wow. Who's is that? Uh, I called it in for about half past five. Oh, yeah. That, was that the one you were going to take to Stratford? Yeah. I mean... That's the biggest flex I've seen since, I don't know, probably me trying to flex on something with no money. You putting a post out the other day saying, does anyone have a helicopter I need to get to Stratford? So great shots of Hampton Downs Motorsport Park here in North Waikato. As we see Luke Fick head back out on track. <laughs> and Sean Potros. With what are they? Come on, follow these. You know he's going to crash. Somebody show me Luke. He's parked up at the line. So Potros's crew, Brandon Clark there, getting him strapped back into the vehicle. So the Elite Performance Stock Street Autos S15 heads back out onto track of Sean Potros, the 2JZ powered up against the LS Turbo.
Oh, oh. JDM Racing. <laughs> Kenny Ruddle thing. just just said it. This is better than a NASCAR punch up. He's also <laughs> explaining that you're allowed two minutes to fix anything that doesn't require a man underneath the car. So Australia versus New Zealand once again. Luke Actually, thing. while we're there, congratulations to Kenny Ruddle and to Tash, proud dad, twins. So happy for you, my friend. Oh. Okay, we're just hearing it. All cameras on Luke Fink's car. He has to do a lap to just prove he's not going to crash. He's going to have nothing left. What's the time? Oh, no, we're okay for time. And in that typical Luke Fink fashion, I mean, just squat it. Well, no, they're just going to send it. Okay. This is ridiculously entertaining. <laughs> this this is TV. <laughs> Look at Launchmaster Willie. Even he's overly excited. Who cares about the front car? Let's watch what Fink can do. Please stay in the draw. Oh, he's going off. <laughs> and he didn't even make the first corner. Look, Fink, he gave it a go, though. He's hit everything. So he's looking for oh, the rally version. He's a machine. Not on the track. He's tearing off everything. He's got his foot up and he's blowing the rear guards off the 180. The, that was a beautifully presented. The only thing that would make it cooler would be George from Inspire You landing his drone inside the cabin. <laughs> and that that was a request. <laughs> yeah, I did wonder if that. And look there, it's broken well and truly again. Some major toe out on the JDM Racing 180. And. Uh, Oh, <laughs> gravel pit and some uh, little kitty litter oil. He's got a de-beated tyre as well. Oh, that right. was the actual reason why. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if there's 10 points available, that 10 of that would be for effort. We'll take a look at the Dale ITM replay. And Potros initiates, and, and Luke Fink just didn't even look like making that corner, did he? Oh, that is magnificent. See, this is why Luke Fink has 70,000 YouTube followers. Should have landed it in there, George. So the winner of that battle to make up the left-hand side of the tree will now be Sean Potros. He will take on Sam West in the Mimico Top 8. Uh, that'll be after we find out the winner of Jordan Joyce versus Dave Steadman. Of course, that's on the left-hand side of the tree. We move our attention now back to the right-hand side, and we've got Troy Jenkins. He'll be out on track very shortly up against Bruce Tannock, but we'll cross down and talk to Sean Potros in the pits. Well, he got there, mate, in the end. <laughs> yeah, we got there, a um, few mechanicals. Um, it'd be good to put a mean battle on with Luke, because he's a wicked driver. Um, sucks to have the power steering issues that he's got, but yeah, we've still got little teething issues that we're fighting along the way, so. Ooh, what's that? Uh, a bit of oiling issues, oil pressure and that, but the Elite Performance team's looking after it, and as well as JG Performance keeping us in check, so. Yeah, bring on the next one. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Just quickly get a final thought from uh, Luke Fink. Oh, oh, tyres stuffed at the back as well, mate. Uh, thanks, thanks for trying. There's absolutely no lack of trying from myself and the JDM Racing team. Uh, we do never give up. I probably should have, honestly. I should have given up before we even went out for the first battle. Though I had no power steering. And if you've ever driven one of these cars with these big angle kits, Without power steering, you're, you're screwed. You're genuinely screwed. Um, I think the only chance we would have had at driving this car is grabbing the steering wheel off the Kenworth. That's honestly the only way. You know, massive steering wheel that I could have wheeled it around like a boat or something. But um, yeah, so we'll go back to the drawing board. You know, maybe I should have brought old Trusty out, the R32 this weekend. We did have some dramas with that as well. So we'll just, uh, yeah, go back to the drawing board. We, uh, we had a win last time I was at Manfield, so. We'll come back there. Hopefully, uh, it'd be nice to do two in a row there or something. That'd be sweet. Tell you what, your guns will be big, though. Tell you what, they'll be good. I'm going to go have a CC. <laughs> so there he is, Luke Fink. Drives away in a pretty battered. And uh, one comment there, Steve, he should have used the R32. I've heard that somewhere already this weekend. Yeah, that was me numerous times <laughs> because I cleaned half of it. Gosh. All right, well, let's just keep on going. All right, it is the Linky CU top 16. Troy Jenkins qualified seventh place up against Bruce Tannock, who qualified in 10th, got a free pass through the top 24, however. And there's a Gazoo Super in the back, GR Super in the background. That's a beautiful car. I might have pinched it for a moment down in Christchurch. Lovely car. 
All right, let's have a look at where we're at right now. There's two more battles to find out who's gone through into the Mimico Top 8. Clayton Daly versus Adam Davies and Jeremy Slammett versus Case Pullen Barry. Of course, Bruce Tannock, sorry, versus Troy Jenkins. That'll be the next one up. Actually, and just... Oh, Speaking look at those. Pull and that, that's Kerry Jones that's leading the pack out there, and then we've got the TA2s in the background. Can we see that battle? Good point. Where was the Cody Pull and Burry battle? So the Ben Jenkins Cody Pull and Burry, Burry uh, Pull and Burry battle. So. Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, the place to be this weekend. Of course, not the only thing happening, as you can see in the background, we have the start of one of the Super Sprint Series round number seven happening in the background as well while the drifting's going on. And make sure you catch all that action tomorrow live on Sky Sport. But the action is on track. On the club circuit for the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship, Troy Jenkins leading out Bruce Tannock for the first time. The Orange accents this time, it's not seeing double. This is the brother of Ben, and he's doing a good lead run here, filling out that outer zone just nicely as he leads Bruce Tannock through the centre part of this drift section. Yeah, Bruce Tannock in the mag and turbo, beautiful Nissan S13, playing the chase game with the TM Electrical 86 in the lead position. Rear bumper falling off Bruce Tannock's car. Great way to grab that outside clip, though. They come through to finish off that run. Troy Jenkins, a nice solid lead run there for him in the TM Electrical 86. Bruce Tannock and the Megan Turbo S13 will take a look at the Dale ITM replay for the first part of this battle. Just love watching the heads of a drifter, eh? They're just constantly out the side windows. So there he is, filling out that outer zone nicely. Bruce Tannock a little bit shallow and trying to close that proximity in through the centre part. Watch as Jenkins goes to fill that outer zone nicely as well. Comes into the final corner to grab the clipping point. A little dab on the handbrake and a nice, tidy, clean lead run from Jenkins. Bruce Tannock doing a pretty good job and Chase as well. The only mistake would be the proximity, if anything. And Tannock, that will be getting rid of a bumper, I'm sure. What's happening with Bruce Tannock's car? So the guys are, oh, OK, it's just a rear bumper. Are they going to fix it back on, or are they going to just nah, it off? rip it off? Oh. oh, there we go, Super V8's in the background. And it is the start of the race, so they'll be heading up. So they've got the V8 Utes in behind as well. There's TA2s. If you get a chance, you have to watch those things. Nathan Hurd down in the South Island was absolutely untouchable. Bones Collins, a few great drivers, but let's go back to drifting. Round two of the Repco. Z1NZ, it's Bruce Tannock versus Troy Jenkins. So Bruce Tannock's chance to lead out this time against Troy and a nice early initiation. Look at the arc that he's got around the first corner there. Fills out that clipping point well and watch him fill out the outer zone. He's going to slide out nice and wide. But Ben Jenkins, uh, sorry, Troy Jenkins. I was hoping I wasn't going to get that wrong all day, Steve, but I have already. They move into the centre part of the section of the proximity from Troy right there. So Troy tries to jump on that. Now you always see that sort of concertina effect and a mistake. So straight one from Tannock. There? Not sure exactly what's happened to Bruce Tannock's car there. We might be able to pick it up in the Dale ITM replay. All right, let's have a look and see. So Tannock, nice job. Just, just doing his thing out there, you know, like really good angle, not, not overly correcting the car. Sets himself up nicely to come through the center section. Troy coming through, just tries to nose down. Back on the gas pedal for the lead car. Mistake here though. So it's a big drag on the handbrake. It's almost like he washed wide to that clipping point. He got back on the gas and there was just too much drive out of that S13. Maybe the grip is just catching him out. As we've heard from uh, multiple other drivers this morning, here it is again from another angle. So he just dials on the angle, he gets on the gas and the car, yeah, just straightens up under power. So whether that was an axle or there's just too much drive. Uh, but that actually, you can see him trying to reinitiate at the end. It might be an axle that's gone in the S13 of Tannock. McIver, Stephen McIver down in pit lane might be able to confirm that one. But yeah, very much looked like maybe the culprit of the broken axle. Too much grip left for Bruce Tannock on the screen right for Troy Jenkins. We're going to go right for Troy Jenkins to take that win. So that's all right, Troy. Welcome back and welcome back to the W Circle. Yeah, hey, that was really good. Unfortunate for Bruce to spit out there, but um, man, the, the TM Electrical car, this is just going so well out this track. Really loving driving here. So um, yeah, hey, looking forward to top eight.
All right, go get it. We're going to just see what happened with uh, Bruce out there at the back. What happened What happened out there on that second run, buddy? Doofy big left hand knocked my car out of gear, so <coughs> I, gra I, I grabbed the handbrake and hooked that rubber finger and then pulled it out of gear, so... But, well, I saw Troy right there. I laid down, uh, honestly, the fattest, widest run I could, and it was absolutely, like, limited, nothing left. And I heard him right there, and I was going to try for the big backwards one, and, yeah, that's just a rookie error, that one. Well done. <laughs> fattest, widest, and doofy left hand. Quote of the day. Oh, that's why it looked like an axle broke. It was popped out of gear. All right, so can you think of anyone else who's ever done that in the D1NZ? OK, tell me who's done that before. Ryan Turk. Oh. So Ryan Turk was facing, I can't remember who it was back in the old, Aiden Omnit actually, it was in Tauranga. They went into the first turn. Ryan Turk went to grab the handbrake. He went from a right, left hooker to a right hooker. Instead of grabbing the handbrake, he opened the door. Oh, wow, OK. So it happens to the best of them, it? and... Uh, <laughs> It's a 1973 Pro Sport Champion. One of the best of them, of course, is none other than Bruce Tannock. All right, there's a battle of Tauranga. It is Clayton Daly versus Adam Davies. Clayton Daly, that beautiful Alia Sex powered Supra making over 700 horsepower. Gosh, that thing sounds amazing. And he's going up against this guy, Rico 24 7 Mimico, Napa Auto Parts. He's got an engine though. The Green Brothers 850 horsepower Triple Rotor 20B, the best Nissan powered vehicle in the country, hands down, and most certainly the best sounding Nissan in the country. Hands down. Adam Davies qualified in 14th position. Clayton Daly, a fantastic qualifying position for him. He finished in third yesterday. He's a higher qualifier and he will set the pace to start. So Clayton Daly in that super as throws it in there. Look at Adam Davies, he's coming in as well, looking for proximity. Big smoke from both these cars. Good looking at battle early stages. Fire? Here's that fire under, it is massive fire under the, uh, the Adam Davies vehicle. He's just still getting in there, hard, no, though. it's just better to hold on to that. It may have actually just, uh, no. Okay, and they've actually gone up and red flagged this one here. They will come through to finish, but we just need to get <laughs> Adam Davies to the, that's going to make wow. the highlights reels forever, isn't it? That is a fantastic shot. And you can see, look how quick they were. They knew exactly what was going on. And Michael Bond will be saying, Adam, get to him right away and stop. So the fire crew doing a good job getting there nice and quickly. And as he slows down to a stop. There we go. You could not get faster than that. That was beautifully done by our crew. They knew exactly what to do, but one of the smartest things that happened was that the driver behind the wheel of that, he continued. If it was out on the track, it would have taken potentially 30 seconds or more. Absolutely. So interesting what's going to happen here, because they, I mean, do they carry on? powder? Well, they, they call it the red... <laughs> The red lights in the middle of the run. Do they? Is that an abort? Like they, they abort the run and then they stop judging it, or do they just? Well, because they're going in the reverse direction, there's an actual chance that the drivers would not have seen that. Yeah. Cool. Um, what I'm suggesting is maybe he's just picked up on some of the original oil started from today. Obviously, I'm just clutching. All right. And that looks awesome, though, doesn't it? From the underneath. There's a little bit of the, look at what is that through the centre of that shot there. I mean, you know that it's going to light stuff on fire. I mean, that is just the unburned rubber. Red lights flashing over there with with the ladder I forgot to steal last night. Talking too much about fire, that's actually a fantastic lead run laid down as well by Clayton Telly. So he's qualified up in third place and he has laid down somewhat similar lead run as well. Clayton Daly looked like a great lead. One of the things that has been brought up for me was don't think that that was actually a rubber fire because if you look at the start of it it was from the center of the car. Yeah it's almost sort of, well he, he's got the um, the wastegate pipe does that come out of the bonnet of that car? And, uh, shots over at that V8 race going on of course, it is the Ripco D1NZ National Drifting Championship round number two here at Hampton Downs. Well, I guess there's a bit of work to do and no better time to do it than right now. We'll be back with more D1NZ action straight after the break.
So we are back here, Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, while the recovery goes on for the Mimico Napa Ryko 24 7 180 of Adam Davies. That fire that happened on under there, and good to see the uh, alertness of the driver as he takes his car straight round to the recovery crew. Nothing better that he could have done in that situation for sure. Fantastic day here in Auckland as they tow that vehicle. It's going to be a line tow back to the pits as we take a look at the grip down on the track. Actually, some sort of uh, liquid down there on the exit of the final turn. I wonder if that's some sort of fuel, potentially. Or if that is oil that's managed to catch itself on fire. Oh, there's going to be a whole lot of oil soak put on around the track. Of course, the track recovery crew doing a great job out there. Looking after the service. Hopefully not too much oil down. That would make a little bit of sense, actually, looking at where that fire started. Of course, uh, Kenny coming through with the facts there as well, showing us that, yeah, the front end of that car. So some sort of uh, oil of some sort. Oh, actually lose a, uh, a Corvette in the background, backwards. But yeah, that oil dripping down, potentially on the exhaust, igniting itself and dropping oil all over the circuit, all the way around. Of course, once again, welcome along international viewers. As uh, Adam Davies' teammate Dave Steadman there taking a look. And Adam having a look around as well. So whether he's going to be able to get that fixed in two minutes or not. Uh, under the rules, if I haven't been mistaken or got this wrong, he cannot jack the vehicle up. He only does get two minutes, no contact. If there was contact between the two cars, it would be deemed a five-minute bell. So we could potentially be a ten-minute one. Uh, if he hasn't called a mechanical all weekend, there could be something along the lines of that one there as well. So the Monaco team there, plenty of brake clean coming out. Thanks to Napa Auto Parts, I'm sure. Beautifully presented race cars though, those Draco 24-7 Mimico. Of course that Nissan 180 powered by the rotary. We'll cross back live very shortly with you to pit lane and hopefully get some words from Adam Davies. So welcome back to, um, well, Pit Lane. Uh, the Mimico boys have lifted the bonnet. They get their two minutes, right? Because it's uh, a broken car, you might say. That's what the rule says. Uh, they're trying to figure out where the oil was and what was causing it. Uh, we know the rules. You can't lift it. So the question is, uh, what's going to happen? And what, are the, what have the team decided? They've got their two minutes running. Can you believe the day we've had so far today? Man. Yeah, I'll try and I'll try and get. Uh, oh. Where's Rick? Rex? What's what's this? Rex? Do you know part of the story? Oh no, I just saw the um, I saw the flames as it came around the corner there, and thought, well, it looks to me like either fuel or oil. Yeah. So we don't know. The, the main oil lines run run back to the back of the car. Yeah. Uh, the the feed the feed and the pressure. So, it, but so does the fuel. Yeah, well, it's so. definitely oil because there's the whole lot of oil on the track. Oh, look out. Dave's come in. Adam doesn't look too happy. Oh. How, how are we, let me check on the time. What's the time say? Oh, wait. Okay, they're all having a chat. Story, in or out? Oh, I, I guess I have to go out. I can't check the car up to see where it's coming from. If I go on track, I'm gonna drop, dump more oil, so I guess I'm out. Oh, you can't catch your break, can no, you? Not this season, no. Nah, anyway. Yeah, let's let's not drag this one out again. <laughs> right, uh, hard luck, mate. Let's go have a chat. To quick, quick chat to Clayton because Clayton will go through on this one. Gets a gets a gets a hand gets a handshake. Hey, Clayton, just quickly. Uh, like any driver, not the way you want to go through, but uh, your lead run, mate. Uh, epic. Awesome. Nah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's um, to be honest, it's awesome getting to drive with these kind of boys. Um, yeah, guessing that that happened to him. Adam's a good bugger, so. Yeah, but nah, I'm keen to get out there and do some more. Mate, Smile says it'll go get ready for the next round. Cheers, thank you very much. 
So, all right, so we've got all sorts of bother going. Let's just uh, check where we are. Let's, uh, p Tony, follow me. Follow me through the yellow brick road. Well, actually, it's the dark Ashfelt road. Here we go. Ah, uh, Case Pullen Burry. Now, won the last round, cleaned everybody else up, and then had a poo qualifying. Well, <laughs> for this one, what went down yesterday? Um, oh, not much. Just, just wasn't our day yesterday. Um, obviously, it was challenging weather out there, and um, yeah, the, some of the boys really uh, did some really good runs, and we just struggled a little bit to hit the mark. So, yeah, we qualified a bit down, but we'll give it our best try today. And yeah. Look, let's be blunt. People are talking you up, right? That you know they they are and you and you're delivering, and that's what people expect. Are, are you feeling any type of pressure going to this, or you just go, nah, put the helmet on, do what you love? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be a little bit there, but um, at the end of the day, I'm just going to yeah, whip the helmet down and drive my car. So, hey, just quickly, uh, Cody, Cody, stuffed right? Did, 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 did another gearbox? Yeah, um, unfortunately, yeah, um, the gearbox went again today, so um. Yeah, really gushing, gushing for him. He's out, out of competition again, but um, we'll, we'll come back swinging for the next one. Who's your, who, whose gearbox have you got? Um, at the moment, I've big thanks to JT Performance. I'm really kind of him to lend me his box for the day. Um, <laughs> I'll promise to try to take care of you. So. <laughs> Yeah. That was a good plead. Well done, Case. Go get it, man. All right, there you go, lads. So Cody out, Case in. Oh, wow. What a day we've had. What a day. JT Performance. We've got to make sure we get that shout-out going up. Well, let's have a look and see how the day has gone so far. This is Kurt Blackie. He certainly uh, didn't have it his way, Tony. No, nah, so Kurt Blackie, he was, uh, blew an axle, didn't he? And uh, Calvin Clark out there taking the win against him. Man, this day has been a war of attrition for so many drivers. Kurt Blackie, one of the first to go out. Then we saw this one, which is a big day because we've seen the ramifications of it. Taylor James does a good start of the lap. We see that big mistake. Huge advantage to Tay J, but then in his chase run, he comes through at this point here. Things are about to get bad for him. Yes, a huge misfortune for the current 2NZ, Taylor James. Uh, you see the turbo beanie there come flying off. He's, uh, yeah, but it's not, not the only bit of fire we've seen today either, is it? And uh, yeah, there it is, a very sad looking CDT drift car getting taken back into the pit area and uh, potentially terminal. Fanger Dam Woolhouse, another one that we saw go out early on. Certainly a four times champion. He was enjoying his time out there, going through, made his way through on uh, the JDM driver. Goes through to the, of course, Stephen McIver. He's like, what's the time? We've got to get a mana wave out of him. From there, we went on to this car here, the 180. Adam Davies, certainly a sensational car. Yeah, so for Adam's sake, hopefully that's not uh, too much oil that's gone from the Green Brothers 20B. And there's teammate Dave Steadman there up against Michael Thurley. I uh, Thorley, sorry, a little bit earlier on as well. Michael Thorley, as he said, it wasn't going to be the uh, David and Goliath battle. And then there was... Uh, Old Luke Fink. Well, it had to be part of the entertainment, most entertaining part of the day, isn't it? So we'll see the big jump and the exit of the track stage left for Luke Fink through the kitty litter. How many times? Not once. Not twice. Three times for Luke Fink. Then we go on to, speaking of David and Goliath, Connor Halligan recently moving from the pro sport party up into the pro game and taking Fanger Dan out of the top 16. Big scout for them as again. What was it this time here? And it was tennis for the win. Of course, Stephen McIver doing a bit of tennis commentary as we see a, an over-rotation and almost an upside down. But it's OK. Let's watch it again from another angle, from another lap. This is part of the reason why we love this man here. Is this the fifth time or the twelfth time for just another angle of the awesomeness of Luke Fink? Check out his YouTube channel. It's Luke Fink. Things pointing in all sorts of different directions. And then, of course, we came down to this one here. Everything looked good until the centre section of that car decided that fire was a good place to come. Yeah, well, it's good for the highlight reels. Hopefully it's not all bad news for that 20B powered 180 and it's not too terminal. I know the Green Brothers are certainly 
Very. Oh, where are we at right now? This is how we got there. We're still waiting for another battle between Jeremy Slammett and Case Pullenbury. But Jordan Joyce will take on Dave Steadman. Sean Potros versus Sam West. And Connor Halligan going up against Troy Jenkins. Again, great to have Troy back. One more battle to find our top eight. And there goes a little bit more dust here at Hampton Downs. There goes the car. There goes the two that are trying to find the last spot in the eight. Case Pullenbury, he won on debut in his Pro Championship debut. He certainly want to try and back that one up with another great result. Of course, issues for the Pullenbury team, both himself and Cody having big issues. Uh, yesterday, terrible qualifying scores and uh, a bit of work to do. Case, as we've mentioned, a sim racing export, um, expert has had to have done at least a thousand laps on this one here. Yeah, so race control, they'll look to send both these guys around for a sight lap, I'm sure, with all the oil down and the extra oil soak that's out on the track. Jeremy Slam it there, JDM Racing, doing a good job flying that flag this weekend, aren't they? And he's out there in that JZ80 Supra, if I get that right, and Case Pullenbury. Can the fairy tale continue for this young man? Like I said, Steve, he just won everything last year. Is there anything he didn't win? Not really. He's uh, the real deal and certainly doing. Well, now they're just scrubbing the tyres up. You see some kitty litter all over the track. And there is Jeremy Slammett. Warm up those front tyres as much as he possibly can. A huge fan of the, uh, the purple and black livery goes on obviously this one a contrast of the other purple other two purple base the black base of course uh, NZKW on the back of the old DMNZ uh, Supra and while we're there of course that car there was campaigned by Jody Ver um, vote Jody Donovan of course we've got our next round Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon Fielding, 12th to the 14th of April. That's rounds three and four, back-to-back. -back. Tickets on sale already. Bay Park Stadium, the grand finale, 10th to the 11th of May, and tickets will be on sale shortly. Repco D with NZ, those are the final rounds of the 24th season. Now, what I was talking about before was Jody Donovan, of course, and Drew Donovan have just um, celebrated the birth of another baby, so congratulations to both of you two. That's uh, Jody's old car out there on track. Oh, look at that, and uh, Drew's old car out there in the hands of Clayton Daly as well. That was the old Australian car, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I can't quite remember actually, but... Case Pullenbury out there warming his tyres up, coming out of the scrap box in the core civil construction. And still standing there, I don't even think he went home. <laughs> Launch master, <laughs> Willie. He got absolutely soaked yesterday, didn't care. And there is the Go Loco current championship leader, Case Pullenbury. Can he add to that? Launchmaster Willie sends them off for the first half of the battle. This is the last battle on the link. ECU top 16 battles. And that the two youngest drivers in the D1NZ out of Mondor, New Caledonia, is Jeremy Slammett going up against last year's pro sport champion and the man who leads the championship right now, Case Pullenbury. So Case Pullenbury looks like he's saying relatively conservative as he normally does. He's a very aggressive driver. Jeremy Slammett out front doing a great job on this lead run as well. A little bit dab on the handbrake as he enters the final corner. Washes a little bit wide. And that opens oh. the door for Pullenbury to close that proximity right up. That is a sensational chase. I mean, it was, it was a really, really nice lead up until the final turn. But just to see Case, and he doesn't care. He's just so comfortable behind the wheel. Proximity's nothing. He's fighting it though. So slam it there, fills that outer zone really nicely on turn one, probably a little bit off there. And Case Pullenbury right there to pounce. And this is where Case starts to claw back. So still a nice lead run, a couple of yanks on the handbrake, a little bit shorter than some of the other ones, which mean that the uh, New Caledonian kids had to wash out a little bit wider. And look, Case is sitting there whacking on his surly. He's like, I'm cool, this is good. All right, well, let's see what happens in the second part of the battle. So Case Pullenbury, he qualified in 11th position. Jeremy Slammett was in 6th position. And here goes 2J versus 2J. 
In case Pullenbury throws it in in the lead position this time there. Oh, Jeremy Slammett takes a little dive early on. It's a little, oh, looked like a reinitiation almost in the chase position through the first turn. So Pullenbury. A decent size correction for the chase vehicle as they come through into the centre section. Big angle by Case. Really still really uh, working that wheel really hard. So really good lead run this time around. Lots of smoke and another correction in behind there for Slammett as well on the final corner. Oh, and Tap on the back wheel as well. Obviously, we don't want to see too much contact, but if it is, that's the type you want to see. Like, oh, I'm going to get on your back bumper. Let's have a look at the replay. Yeah, so have a look at this here. Um, it was like he had a late initiation, did slam it, and then he sort of hesitated somewhat and then has straightened up on the first corner. Paul and Burry doing a great job out in front. Big smoke show from him in the first turn. So they come through the centre section in case again. You just see that the wheel working left and right. I don't know. I think there's something wrong behind their box and the uh, the box maybe not the box in the uh, steering box. But he comes through and <laughs> look at the knock knock. Who's there? I am. And there it is, the contact late in the piece. Jeez, was that rim that just flew up everywhere? Was that fiberglass? Hopefully it was just fiberglass. Foam. Well, we'll go down and see who the judges think should go through into the last spot on the eight. Come on, Stephen, you've got a mana wave in there. Surely you've got a mana wave. <laughs> Google it. Yoh. Oh, he does, does he not know what the mana ah, is? The Warriors will teach you what the mana wave is. I'm sitting there trying to show him what a mana wave is, as if he knows, as if he can see me. I'm an idiot. Yes, I can hear me. <laughs> so we're going to go left for Case Pull and Burry. It's going to be right for Jeremy Slammer. Course of construction versus JDM Racing. And there's the deliberation from the judges' tower. You can see them looking away there. And... Uh, is it darts? Oh, darts? 180. <laughs> there you go. I see a triple 20. All right, 20, 20, 20, three triple 20s, and it's going to be 180 to Case Pullenberry. That fell into a Pumana wave. Yeah. Well done, buddy. You get that feeling that maybe you can go from P22 to P1 today? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know about that, but we'll just take it one at a time. You uh, looked a little tentative on the first run. Yeah, yeah, I was just, just trying to make sure that I could try and get through clean. Um, Jeremy did a good job out front, and I was just trying to trying to keep it clean and behind him. Yeah. All right, keep rolling. Let's just quickly have a quick chat to J Jeremy. Uh, was, the, uh, was there some sort of a nervousness about the oil out there? Yeah, a little bit of nervous. We tried a different setup on the car a little bit. But uh, yeah, I've, I've tried something new, which I didn't know, and uh, didn't work out pretty well on the on my lead run. But uh, I'm very happy with, with the run overall. Very nice. Uh, Case is, is on fire. So I trust him on the lead and just went for it. Not bad for two guys that practice with each other on The Sims, man. You chase was a ripper. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you. Aw. Thank you, bro. Jeremy Slammett. Making uh, ways with his Kiwi ways, and good to see him over here drifting from New Caledonia. Au revoir, see you at the next round. Au revoir, au revoir, au revoir. So we move now into the Mimico top eight. And the first battle up will be your P1 qualifier, Jordan Joyce, up against this man, Dave Steadman. I like to call him a little bit of Mr. Consistent as far as drifting goes. And as the Napa Auto Parts for Ico 24-7. And our top qualifier is Jordan Joyce in the Elite Performance S14. It's 14 versus 14. RB versus 2J, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. 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 Launchmaster Willie sends them away. It'll be Jordan Joyce leading out as the P1 qualifier from Dave Steadman. Into the first corner they go. It's like we haven't seen Jordan Joyce at all today because of everything else that's happening. But there he is now. We'll see how he comes through this one here. Needs to get right up by the cone. Probably sort of misses it a little bit. And at this point here, Dave Steadman, you really need to close up the proximity. Comes through, gets on the gas, heads down the final turn. So filling out that third outer zone real nicely was Jordan Joyce. And he's going to wash wide across that oil there and fill out the last clipping point as well towards that wall. But Steadman right there on the door as well. Some good proximity from Steadman late in the piece. We will shoot to the Dale ITM replay and let's just have a look. I'm not too sure if that was a mistake from Jordan on the initiation. He drags the handbrake nice and early before the section and then a little bit of a correction there and slides out towards and trying to pick up that clipping point as good as he can. Stedman there 
not lost in the smoke. Takes a dive up the inside to try and close up that proximity, which he did really well. And then Jordan Joyce fills out the final clipping point. There's almost a pass. So Stedman nice and shallow on the final corner to close up the proximity there. Second run in the top eight. Dave Sedman versus Jordan Joyce. Dave Sedman in the lead position. Let's see what the bay driver can do as he leads away. Uh, Stedman now in the lead position and throws it in nice and early, so holding some good angle in his arc. He's very shallow on that first clipping point. He tried to grab a bit of dab on the handbrake to drift out wide as well, but they're out of zone this time there. Gets there, Jordan Joyce nice and close as well. That is a nice chase run by Jordan Joyce. Man, he's just right on there. He knows exactly what he needed to do. Ran shallow, almost ran himself out of room, but no, and oh, he's gonna go up and push out wide, and Jordan Joyce is just gonna come up and close the door on him. Takes the inside pass. So Stedman just washes really wide there. Jordan Joyce was down nice and low. Let's talk about what went right and what went wrong for that one. Jordan Joyce used shallower line to basically create an incredible chase run. Really nice job up front. Dave Stedman doing absolutely nothing wrong. But of course, there's the shallowness of the run. But that's what the judges ask for is proximity. Right on the bumper. You don't get much better than this. To me, this is the best chase run. I'm not saying this is what the judges have asked for. But to me, this is the best chase run of probably the season today. And look at that, there it is right there. The proximity is right by the back wheel. And then he goes for May, max proximity on the final corner as well. So the white line is essentially the judges line. And that's why, and Dave Stedman wasn't there. Still, and <laughs> he passed and got the clipping point at the same time. So what the judges should probably look at is that Dave has washed out wide. The underpass happened and that was potentially a safety reason as in I can either continue out into the, you know, you can take me out into the kitty litter or else I'll just make a nice pass. What are we going for this time? And one, two, three, Jordan Joyce takes the win. Oh, 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 oh. Got out and got the win. How about that? Yeah, I'm nah, pretty stoked with that. Oh, this dude's got me a few times over the last season, so pretty happy with that one, eh? Yeah, take that. Yeah, yeah. He came at you, though. What was that? He came at you, though. Yeah, yeah, he's hard on the door always. I knew I had to stick it on him, and he always puts on the best lead run, so he can't beat that, eh? So uh, big ups to the team, bro. I'm happy ass. You're a good man, sir, surely. Ah, oh, Steadmeister, hey? Yeah. What happened at that, that last corner? Yeah, just lost all grip, to be honest. I switched in there, and... Just no grip. It almost felt like I'd caught fire again because there was just nothing there, but I don't think it did. No, you're not, mate. Otherwise, I wouldn't be kneeling down on the side of this car here. Yeah, I don't really know. We'll have to watch some replays, check the footage, see what... I just had nothing there. It was really quite strange. Yeah, but we'll see in Manfield. Double round, right? I I'll blame Adam. He put the oil down. <laughs> All right. Thanks, mate. Well played. Yeah, you didn't catch fire. That was your teammate. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the championship point standings as we speak. So Case Bowler and Pullenbury is in the lead of 164 points from Dave Steadman. He can't make any additional changes. Who can? Sean Potros on 122. Connor Halligan, he's still there at 116. Fang it down. He's gone 99 the best he's going to get. Jordan Joyce is the one who's going to see some points rise. Jeremy Slammett, 92 points from Sam West, Clayton Daly and Luke Fink. As we work further down, Michael Thorley, Taylor James, not good for Tay James. Cody Pullenbury, he didn't even make it to the 16. McManaway. Bruce Tannock, Adam Davies, Calvin Clark, and we get ready for our next battle. So our next battle out on track is Sam West and the Jason Open Builders 180SX and Sean Potros will check out how they've played out and how they got there at the moment. The top 16, Jordan Joyce took the win over Calvin Clark to get into the top eight. He's taken the win over Dave Steadman to get himself into the top four. Well, as we look at this battle we've got coming up next, Sha um, Sean Potros is going to go up against Sam West. Sam West's got the win over Ben Jenkins, Sean Potros over Luke Fink. And of course, if Potros wins that, he's going to go up against his teammate and Jordan Joyce. Oh, another teammate battle potentially brewing there. Connor Halligan through to the top eight after beating Finger Dan Morehouse and Bruce Tannock after beating Troy Jenkins. And in the very bottom part of it, we've got Clayton Daly taking the win over a fiery Adam Davies. And as you just saw, Case Pullenbury beating Jeremy Slammett. That's the Mimico top eight lineup as they are at the moment. Just one through to the top four by the way of Jordan Joyce. 
And of course, go, this is the road to the final today. And right now, our next battle up will be Sam West in the 2JZ powered 180SX, 800 plus horsepower. He's going up against Sean Potros. Potros has had issues overnight with the S15, a new, new motor, but he's certainly come out looking elite in the stock street. He'll go up and line up side by side with Sam West. Sam West coming through with a qualifier of fifth position. And as we know with Sean Potros, he was essentially dead last. They'll line up side by side. Probably not a man I'd want to chase down. First up, Sam West. We know he can lay down a pretty good looking lap. Yeah, so Sam West is a very good lead driver. Potros extremely aggressive in the chase as well. So let's see the trust between these two drivers and what sort of proximity they bring us. A nice early initiation from the Jason Overs builders. 180, and he's a little bit shallow on the first clipping point, Sam West, but Sean Potros is right there with him. Sean Potros, I think, has watched what his teammate did and has followed a very similar line. Oh, that was almost an over-rotation. Ran him out of room, but both drivers still kept their foot down as they come down to the final turn. What is, yeah, as I thought, is Sam West, what's the go with the elite guys going for the passes today? So, yeah, I mean, Sam West, he carried a lot of speed into that final corner wash really wide, and I wonder if there's uh, that, that, that oil that Dave Steadman was talking about just a moment ago. Is One thing that you know when you're the lead driver, especially yourself in Speedway, I've done it myself before, is you can feel the car behind you, beside you, and you can feel just how close they are from the engine rumble. He'd know that Potros was there. The Potros comes through, closes the door. Big angle, or probably too much angle, as we see that correction. They fire up, and he knows that he's got a three throw it in hard and that's exactly what he does but that's the wrong turn to do it he washes out wide and we see another stock street elite come through for the pass so look at that sean potros's elite performance stock street autos now he, we know he's a strong chaser he's even a stronger leader can sam west put the pressure on sean potros well, Sam West, I mean, he's a great driver. We'll see if he can close up that gap, maybe do the same thing. He started from a slightly higher line and, well, Sean's a little bit off his line. Well, and here's Sam West putting those pressures straight on. A big smoke show from both these drivers. Potros throws it in to the centre part of the section and a big left foot break from Sam West to try and keep it right on the door. They throw it into the final corner. And where's the grip levels at this time? Well, I'd say that this is probably enough for Sean Potros because of the mistake that was made by Sam West. A nice close proximity battle there though, good viewing. Most certainly, like you say, the lead driver a little bit off his line. We'll take a look at that again on the Dale ITM replay. Here it is, Sean Potros initiates Sam West right there and yeah, very shallow from Potros. So Potros does start to make the way out towards that clipping point here. We don't quite see it here, but he again, slides back down, quick transition, a lot of angle, and of course angle equals slowing the car down. Sam West able to get onto the bumper, you'll see them both slide up into the final turn. And then at this point here, it comes down to the lead run where Sam West made the mistake. This was a beautiful chase run by Sam, but the mistake in the lead is going to cost him. Sean Potros, in theory, is going to do enough to go through unless the judges saw something that we didn't. That's it. So we've got Sean Potros on the left, Sam West on the right. We're probably expecting to see a Sean Potros win here, like you say. It is one, two, three to the 719 of Sean Potros. He'll take the win over Sam West. Congratulations, Sean. What were you jabbering to uh, Sam about up there and you giggling? Uh, um, just as we went back round to go for my lead, my car started running on five, but I talked to James about that before and he just said send it, so it's paid off. <laughs> yeah, are you feeling better about the wheels? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of like, I don't know, the sawdust or whatever they put on the track. Yeah. It's like a bit slippery, but yeah, just don't go full send because you might go off the track. But yeah, hopefully we can fix this miss quickly and get back out there. Well played. We'll see you in the next round, man. We're getting closer and closer. Sam West had a good run. What was he, a hot mess to a hot finish? Uh, oh, yeah. Not this time, uh, but good chase, I thought. Yeah, just trying a bit too hard in my lead. That's I always go 110%. I beat myself most of the time, but I'd rather go out and put on a show than uh, be disappointed in how I'm driving, so no, it was me. Yeah, what did you learn from this weekend? Uh, probably just to try rein it back a little bit, but I <laughs> tell myself that every time and it never works, so I'll just carry on doing what I'm doing, I think. Nothing wrong with going hard, pal. Ah, that's it. I'm having fun, so that's what it's about. Well done, mate. Awesome. Cheers, mate. I tell you what, Steve, that's the second time I've heard that from a driver, and I'm sure if you ask every single other driver that's about having fun out there and they're loving it here at Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, North Waikato, and it's the second round of the D1NZ. 
Correct. Oh, look, it's... Somerset GT. There goes Armstrong. That's the car to watch right there. He'll be the car to watch tomorrow as we see round seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship from 10 a.m. Sky Sport. That is 10 a.m. New Zealand time. Brock Gilchrist out there. He'll, uh, he's got Tony Clinton behind him. Anyway, let's park up the Somerset GTs. Let's move into the D1NZ, and this is the Pro Championship. It's getting down to the pointy end. We've got Connor Halligan in the 1.5 JZ, 700 horsepower. It's an S14. He's going up against the 2 JZ. Carter's tyres on the side, but we know it's Team Electrical as well. So we're moving across to the right hand side of the tree. It is Connor Halligan, Troy Jenkins on the top of the right hand side. We've still got Clayton Daly and Case Pullenbury to come through as well. We've got two of the top four already on the left hand side. Jordan Joyce against Sean Potros. It'll be teammate versus teammate. But right now, it is Launchmaster Willie sending Connor Halligan ahead of Troy Jenkins. Connor Halligan qualifying in second place will lead him out. And there it is, nice early initiation. Good wide arc for Halligan as he fills out that clipping point really nicely. Troy Jenkins sticking with him. Big smoke show for Halligan out front at the moment. Well, we come through and switch, and it'll be Troy Jenkins trying to get onto that back bumper as they slide through the centre section. Jenkins doing a nice job in the chase position. It comes down to Halligan. What's the final turn going to look like? So the drivers are talking about how much that sawdust is slippery under there, but Connor Halligan has got that dialed perfectly at the moment. What a run in the lead and what a chase from Troy Jenkins. Oh, I want to go to him here and say that might be one of the closest battles we've seen so far, Steve. Well, it's starting to look good. It's starting to get hot under the bonnet behind the steering wheel. Connor Halligan throwing the car. Look at the angle that he's got and just the smoke show that's going on out here. It Hampton Downs, the pros, the cream, it rises. So if we want to try and nitpick something here, there wasn't quite as much angle from Troy Jenkins in the chase position as Connor Halligan had in the lead run. But that's about the only thing that I can see, and it's only by a mere couple of degrees. So well, we'll come down to the second half of the battle this time. It goes down to launch master Willie. Almost a poo kind of down there for Willie. As we go side by side, we get tuck in behind Jenkins and get ready to kick it into life. Jenkins starts his drift. So Jenkins with a nice wide arc there. There's that clipping point you can see. And Collega Hennigan, Halligan, here he is, right up on the door of Troy Jenkins. As I say that, he falls back. So the proximity has actually been closer from Troy Jenkins in his chase run. What can Connor do late in the piece? Well, he comes through to close the door. Halligan running a really uh, tight line. Jenkins comes through, grabs that outside clip. It almost looked like he was going to wash out, but he was just arcing out to grab the clip perfectly. Uh, and some fantastic drone shots, George, and the Inspire U Media team. Let's have a look at the Dale ITM replay here. Jenkins, nice early initiation, and he was a little bit off that clipping point. Could have been a little bit wider. There's the outer zone, a little bit shallow there potentially. And Halligan, the proximity wasn't there. I <laughs> almost commentated cursed him that one. I'm used to doing that now, and I? I need to stop potentially saying that about his proximity. He tried to close it up by... Man, it just right looked up. like at that point there, Jenkins was off to the... You know, off to Mad Mike's house. But no, he <laughs> held on, kept the arc, and was able to grab that outside clip. Which way are you going to go? I mean, it could go any way. I'm thinking it's possibly maybe advantage Troy Jenkins. That's where I'm thinking. But I'm not a judge. Yeah. Tell you who would get it right if he chose. I think if we're going for proximity, like we spoke about it. it right. So left for Troy Jenkins, right for Connor Halligan. I'm sure there is some deliberation going on with those judges upstairs. Here we go. You know, Okay, which way is it going to go? It's it going to be one more time. Wow. Tell you what, I think that, that is a, a pretty get, warranted one more time, isn't get, it? Just get back and put some more rubber on. Let's see them go at it again. Oh. How's it going down there anyway, Stephen? It looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, yes, it is, mate. I, I gotta say, I haven't seen so many of the big boys break cars in a long, long time. And I gotta, yeah, let's be blunt, you gotta hand it to the pro sport crews. Their cars were almost faultless today, weren't they? Well, so it's, it's been, been looking it's good. Been, it's been one of those days, but just got a funny feeling. You know how you get a funny feeling about someone that they're gonna do well? I've got this funny feeling. It, no, no reason, no rhyme, no reason about Connor Halligan today. Don't know what it is. Connor Halligan? Just got that funny feeling. Just makes a funny hard feeling. For himself at the moment, isn't he? He's gotta do it one more time. <laughs> 
But it's cool, mate. It's great. And the, the, I haven't seen so many fans just cruising in and out of the pits, having such a good time and really enjoying themselves. And uh, and then there's the backdrop, of course, of the round seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport Board New Zealand Championship, of course, which uh, completes tomorrow for the Somerset GTNZ Championship. They've got their one hour running in the background now. They've got two 30 minute races tomorrow, and then we'll find out who the champion is and also the Porsche Endurance Champion as well. So it's a cracking live sport weekend here at Hampton Downs in the North Waikato. Wherever you are watching around the world and you get the chance to come out here, uh, please do. Uh, please do. That's what I like to hear. Of course, come on down tomorrow. It is the round number seven, the grand final of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. It's down to Launchmaster Willie. We're going to get ready to go with Case Pullen Burry and Clayton Daly. Clayton Daly, the higher qualifier yesterday. He will set the lead run to start in this battle here. This is for a spot in the top four. Here comes Case Pullen Burry. So the very aggressive driving nature of Case Pullen Burry was that contact on the right front wheel from him onto Clayton. Clayton Daly's rear and the proximity, look at it there, he's nice and aggressive. It's the way that Case drives, obviously all that sim driving as well. Um, it doesn't cost as much money when you're driving a sim versus real life, does it? But look at it again, he is a mere metre off the side of Clayton Daly. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for that battle. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. We've seen some incredible chase runs today, but that was, that has to be the best chase run of the season to date. Let's have a look at the lead run at the same time. To have a great chase run, you have to have an amazing lead run, and there was nothing wrong with what we saw up front. Clayton Daly, he just got into business. But I'd say, look, again, so much work behind the steering wheel for Case Bull and Burry. Yeah, something that we're not quite used to seeing. There's the touch of ever so slightly, so it might be a minor deduction there for Case Bull and Burry. And Clayton Daly, he's loving this Hampton Down circuit. He is doing a great job. Look at that lead run, fills that outer zone so, so much. He's only a mere inch off the track as well and then no handbrake into the final turn as well so he's got that car dialed in fantastic has the rhp team and doing a good job behind the wheel is clayton daly wow well second half of the battle time now it's case's turn to lead well, let's see what goes on this time. Core civil construction on the side. JT Performance, he thanked them earlier. A slight correction to start with, but here, he, here comes Clayton. Well, Clayton's doing the same. So good angle from Case as he comes off there. The proximity has expanded somewhat, and Clayton Daly's going to wash real wide here. Has he gone off the track? He has. We've lost Clayton Daly from the back of Case Pullenbury. He's going to get himself stuck in there if he doesn't get keep the momentum. And Case Pullenbury comes through to finish off this lead run. Wow. So nice and aggressive start, though, to the run from Clayton. Yeah, let's have a look and see at this one. So this is when I mentioned the first correction to start with for Case Pullenbury. Everything's going fine, and it's like Clayton said, whatever you can do, I can do better. But at this point here, I don't know if he got lost in the smoke right there, maybe, I don't know, but the car just sailed, and so lucky. That's it, he almost got himself into the wrong position, didn't he? But, um, yeah, I mean, I wonder if we can get something from Stephen McIver down there. It looks like Case Pullenbury's got some unusual movements that we're not used to seeing. He's normally a lot smoother than that on the stearing wheel. My suggestion to Case Pullenbury and the Pullenbury team is change his gloves to black, because we can see them. Okay, so... Okay, massive amount of angle. Okay, this might have been, okay, that's the telltale shot. Murray's down there saying, please don't show that again. He was almost backing it into that turn. Is he gonna get marked down and scolded for it? I mean, the, the chase driver mimics the lead run, doesn't he? And K stayed on the track. We should have backed it in. No, it's straight away, we've got it. Redwood counter, Fadero says it's going to case Pullenbury. Woo! I gotta say, that chase was mint. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. I mean, you don't, you don't get a good chase without a really good lead. So just shout out to Clayton. That was a mean lead, like to chase. Like, yeah. It was yeah, unbelievable. yeah but let's be blunt. You couldn't have put a piece of paper between some of those, those, those moments. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I was trying my best to stay in there and not let him get away and um, yeah, managed to just yeah, keep it off him just. All right, keep going, mate. You're going well. Let's have a look and talk to Clayton Daly. What happened at the end, buddy? <laughs> you know I was going to ask that question. What went down, brother? Nah, I was following Chase. He's oh, following Case on his <laughs> oh, doing my chase run. Um, 
That was, yeah, awesome, awesome lead run from Case. Um, yeah, I just got lost in the smoke, popped out. Oh, there's the grouse. And what, there we go. What did you What did you think of him being all over your tailpipe oh, on man. when you were leading? And it was a good, as he said, it was a great lead. That was awesome, eh? Nah, I, yeah, super, super stoked. Case is awesome, awesome family. So yeah, nah, super proud. Thanks for the entertainment, mate. Awesome, nah. Thank you guys. <laughs> That's what. Isn't that, that been the theme today? Everybody's having fun. Everybody's enjoying it. Is it the case of the chasing case? We'll find out. Remember, he qualified P22. P22 as we move on and get closer. P22, and he's not even anywhere near 22. Case Pullenbury certainly uh, doing his best to make sure people know exactly who he is. Tell you who will be watching. So Formula Drift teams have to be watching this kid. <laughs> Yeah, if I want to see one driver, the, just the aggression. So we're going straight to the one more time. Anyway, out on track, Connor Halligan up against Troy Jenkins. Connor Halligan leading out as the high qualifier, and he's initiated away he goes into the first turn. A little bit shallow on that first clipping point. Here comes Troy Jenkins, not as close on the proximity. And, oh, is that a straight line or some sort of correction from Jenkins in the chase there? Well, of course, a big gap's been formed between himself and Connor Halligan. He'll be wanting to see a mistake from Halligan. And Halligan washing out wide, but he's seen it so many times. Just comes through, diamonds it off, grabs it outside clip. Of course, it's the job of the lead driver to mimic the, uh, the qualifying run, essentially, that's been set upon them by the judges. The uh, chase driver must use the lead driver as a mobile clipping point. Slight gap between himself though. So let's have a look and we'll just again talk about any potential mistakes. Yeah, so keep your eye on the Carter's tyres. TM Electrical 86 in behind there. And it's at that moment there. It was in the smoke, but either it was a big correction or a reinitiation from Jenkins. So advantage Connor Halligan from what we can see at the moment. So, of course, the judges now score, I think, out of 100 for in this. They used to talk about, like, 10 zeros and things like that. If we look at the old school way, I'm sort of thinking, leaning towards maybe a 7-3 advantage in the favour of Connor Halligan. We're back to the second half of the battle this time, though, and it will be down to launch master Willie and says, off you go. Troy Jenkins, he's here. This is home for him, and let's see what he can do as he heads out to the line. It looks like a sort of a slower initiation by Jenkins, but again, he's done more laps there than most people. So yeah, Halligan trying to keep that proximity as well. And Jenkins powering away, but there, a good dive from Connor to close that proximity right up. So Jenkins fills out that at his own really nicely, throws it into the final corner. Connor Halligan taking it, sort of relatively conservative by the looks maybe, proximity wise. He knows he doesn't need to make a mistake or force it. Man, he's a consistent driver as Troy Jenkins. Looked really nice out there. Just the not overly, not a huge amount of movement in what he was doing. He just set himself up. I talked about this, the sort of a, the very kind of, not a sluggish, but just, I don't have to absolutely smash the accelerator down. And then he starts winding it up, comes out there, grabs his clip, a nice switch just yanks on the handbrake and then gets into but you just look at the lack of movement in the wheel in respect of just how smooth the fluidity yeah very smooth like you say not showing as much pace as all the other lead runs that we've seen so far this afternoon and a good lead run laid down by troy jenkins all right have we got a result we've got troy jenkins on the left and connor halligan on the right well, let's go down and we've got Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, and JT Farido say Connor Halligan goes through. Couldn't help myself. Got to put your hands in there after that one, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked with that one. Um, that was a, sort of a close battle that first time, so, you know, you know, I had to just make it happen again on the on the, on the the second one. So, yeah, no, I'm stoked. Cool. No dramas out there with the, you know, the, the sawdust down, what they're putting over the oil, anything like that? Um, I haven't noticed it. I, when I do the uh, the look lap before our, um, yeah. before our battle, I always make sure to test the grip. You can sort of see how it is with the front wheels. So you get a bit of an idea. It's, it's sweet out there. It's, it's real grippy, though, because of the heat, you know, so. Yeah. You know who's next, don't you? No, I don't. Case. Ah, good stuff. Be like pro sport all over again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go get him. Let's have a, a quick chat to uh, Troy here. i got to say, I said to me, it looks like a Jaffa. Look at that. Looks like a Jaffa. But it, I just had to say, you, you'll let me have that one, will you? Oh, well. Not yeah, a Jaffa as in, you know, Auckland thing, but a Jaffa <laughs> the sweet. That's right, that's right. Uh, no, was, um, you looked at, what happened on that? What happened on your chase run? 
Yeah, well, I was chasing him and um, he cut the corner off, so he's actually ended up in the dirt where you're not supposed to be, so I followed him out there and we jumped the corner as well. It's probably damaged the wheel, but anyway, we jumped across it too and I lost some proximity because we're where we weren't supposed to be, so I'm, I'm surprised that he's won that, but um, hey, that's all good. Is this the last time we see you? Uh, not sure. No, we'll probably be back at Bay Park. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah, it would be. All right, thanks, mate. There you go. <laughs> you. I'm a Jaffa. I don't mind saying I'm a Jaffa. We'll be back with more. <laughs> don't look at me like that. Top four coming your next Repco D1NZ live. Welcome back to the D1NZ National Drifting Championship, the Repco D1NZ, of course, round number two here at Hampton Downs, part of round seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. Hello, I'm SDM. Hey, Tony I'm G. Tony G. There we go. It's great to be here. Beautiful day here at uh, Hampton Downs Motorsport Park as well, of course. Once again, international viewers, welcome along. We do thank you for tuning in to the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Yeah, so what's been, man, it's been a fun day, but attrition, man, there's some drivers that have fallen off. Yeah, I mean, those are, with some big names fallen already, we've got um, Fangerdam Woolhouse, full-time national champion, he's gone. Uh, we've got both the Jenkins boys, they've been around for a long time as well. Uh, they're both gone. Well, that's the, uh, the story of the tape at the moment. Of course, we talked about Jordan Joyce, he's going to go up and take on his teammate. He went through Calvin Clark, Dave Steadman, and uh, of course, he's going up against Sean Potros, who took the win over Luke Fink, then went through with uh, Sam West, and now he's got to go up in the top four. From there, we go to Connor Halligan. He's had a fun drive. Yeah, so Connor, he's taken out that four-time New Zealand champion, Dan Woolhouse. He then took out Troy Jenkins, and he has the current points leader and current pro sport champion, Case Pullenbury, up next. Case, he has gone through by beating Jeremy Slamet in the top 16, and then Clayton Daly in the top eight, and that's the way he got to the top four. And we'll take a look at the championship points so far. So of course the championship at the moment can only go one place and one space and that is Case Pullenbury. He is uh, definitely in a, in a pretty good spot. Of course he's the only one that's climbing. There's other people. Case Pullenbury 176. Dave Steadman he's out so 138. This is as of top eight. Sean Potros he can still move higher. So can Connor Halligan and Jordan Joyce. The rest of them. Fanger. Bessie's going to lie is six. Jeremy Slam at seven. Sam West eight. Clayton Daly. Luke Fink. That rounds out the top 10 but the only people that can move are the top four here's some of the minor places further down good to see some great names such as Brody Ma would be lovely to have him back I'm sure I can swing that one for some unusual names to see outside the top 10 as well like Taylor James Bruce Tannock Adam Davies you used to see those guys well and truly embedded into the top 10 and they're not sitting there at the moment so of course this is basically the home of motorsport in this area all right, Manfield Circuit, Chris Samuel, and that's the next one up for us. From there, it's Bay Park Stadium for the grand finale. D1NZ.com for ticketing information. Welcome back. This is the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship and it is a 20 degree high but I can tell you what it's about 40 degrees uh, behind the steering wheel and about 200 degrees under the bonnet. Yeah, and we have Jordan Joyce and Sean Potros. It is Elite Performance against Elite Performance. Stock Street Auto versus Stock Street Auto. Two 2 JZ powered Nissan Sylvia chassis. One of them's an S15, one's an S14. And uh, big problems for Sean Potros if you have just joined us. He overnight had to replace that engine. And uh, massive oh. shout out to HRE and, and JT Performance. It might have been a problem yesterday, but sure as heck isn't a problem today. All right, okay, we've got to go up and determine which is which. Well, the S15's the one closest to us, so that's Potros. Right there is Jordan Joyce. He is our pole sitter with a 95-point uh, run yesterday. Of course, that's, we've seen some ridiculously high runs this year, which is nice to see as well. Are we going to see 100 before the end of the season? 
Well, they'll go and start grabbing the gears as we'll see the two teammates going up against each other. And it is Sean Potros in the chase position. Jordan Joyce is the higher qualifier, leads out. These two here worked out a way of chasing down, though he trying to shake each other off. There he comes, knocking on the door of his teammate. So it was a real good, strong start to the run from Jordan Joyce. And Potros was very shallow on the initiation. He's closed the proximity right up for the final corner here. Look at him getting nice and close. And they're not scared to scratch each other's cars, are they? <laughs> they certainly aren't. So uh, obviously one of the things we want to look at it, that this replay is the tail end of it with Sean Potros coming across the line. Um, so here we go. This is Jordan Joyce, our pole sitter. And you can see how shallow Potros is right there. He knows that he wants to get the proximity on Jordan Joyce. There's a massive amount of trust, I'm sure, between these two drivers. We've seen in the past the contact. Look how close is slow-mo. That's a great shot through the middle of the centre section there. And some, uh, I mean, if anything, it's a little bit of a messy chase from Potros. It does get a little bit messy because of the aggression he wanted to hold. Now, I'm looking at the chase driver. He's obviously going, I'm not allowed to pass. Oh, I think he managed to hold. One of the things I was looking at is, did we see the chase car go all four wheels, um, basically straight, in a, in, a, in a Ford's position? I don't believe the answer is yes. I think he managed to maintain his drift. So you're looking at sort of what, B pillar to A pillar, or A pillar to A pillar? I almost? think it's actually, basically, they have to go a foot. Yeah. All right, so it is Sean Potros's turn to lead out Jordan Joyce this time. Look at the proximity already from these two drivers. Like I say, huge amount of trust. Oh, a bit of a correction for Sean Potros in the first corner. He's looking to fill that outer zone on the way out of turn number one. Potros slightly out of his line as well. And contact between the two drivers. And, uh... Well, they're just going to go back to the pits and have a fight. Get the camera on this. <laughs> this will be fun. Well, uh... I guess we have a look to see what, what caused that. Yeah, well, it's going to be the cause of the accident, isn't it? Jordan Joyce comes through. Reminded that lead the run. And Jordan Joyce didn't have to. Jordan was in the ch chase position. Chase position. He was, yes. Was so, Jordan in the chase or the lead? Yeah, he was chasing. He yes, out he was. Because he was a high qualifier. So we're looking at this point here. A bit of left foot brake, a big correction, and that correction sent the lead driver probably a little bit off his line because he's not right out by the where he needs to be. They come through to switch, and he Ooh. switched. Okay, hang on. He's he's allowed to switch at that point there. So Potros has the, is trying to switch, isn't he? So has the chase driver not allowed the lead driver to switch because you actually have to give them a certain amount of room to be able to switch back or else things like that happen. Wow, so that, very interesting. Yeah, like you say, Steve, it looked like in the centre party tried to switch back. Here it is. So they'll come through, and like at this right point here, there. he goes Dang. to switch and switches into the nose yes. of the chase driver. Now, it's, in that case, the chase drivers essentially run the lead driver out of space to switch. Wow. Either way, tight, close battle and an awesome show put on by the Elite Performance Stock Street Auto Boys. You know what I need? I need Kenny Ruddle to message me and give me the answers to everything I need to know. <laughs> so there's Jordan Joyce in the triple three on the left, the 719 of Potros on the right. And uh, be interesting to see which way this goes. And I do like a good digi camo design. Here we go. Here we go. We've got a decision. Sean Potros gets the win. Man, now, now you're getting cocky. You're telling me you, you got the win, right? Oh, yeah, I'd like to go AMG. I know that we can do better than that, me and Jordan. But, yeah, <laughs> nah, it's, it's good. The car's on song, so can't thank my team or my sponsors that make all this happen, the D1 crew that are out here doing it. So, Willie's was out in the rain yesterday, and now he's out in the sun today, so... <laughs> Good you, on him. Do you think you've found your rhythm? Uh, sort of not, not really, but I was making it up as I go, really. Well, make it up because you're in the big one, man. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, neither can we. You get put on a show by the teammates. Let's go around the back of uh, someone that started with a front bumper, didn't end up with a front bumper. Did you, did you get lost in the smoke, pal? Oh, honestly, uh, yeah, I just couldn't see him, and I, I wasn't going to let off to let him get away, so uh, I'll get him next time. OK, so you're still going to have a crack for third and fourth, and that's good points because I know on the on the live board you've moved right up the ladder. Yeah, no, um, I'm happy as with the outcome. Um, after last night's miss fixing the bros' car, I'm happy as with how we got, and um, thanks to everyone that helped us get here. Yeah. All right, mate, we'll see you in the three and four. 
I mean, it's got to be real tough coming up against your teammate, especially in no a love loss. situation. And uh, like you said, he was not letting him get away. Well, let's have a look at the, uh, again, what happened there as we go on board. So it takes a wheel off anyway, but he's right up there, kind of in the pocket. Goes through the, yeah, he's got yeah, great at momentum at this point here, yeah. and then bang. So he was just looking for the trust of how much drive he thought. He was probably counting the seconds. I know that some of the drivers do that. And uh, yeah, and Kenny's agreed. He said the answer is yes, you were right on that one there. One of the things that Kenny said is they might have actually zero zero the second uh, the second one anyway, which means you go back to the first. Yeah, yeah. So um, what? Well, yeah, effectively. Look at that. I mean, just going back to it, I can't imagine in, a, in this situation, it's the National Drifting Championship, you're in the top four, you're battling for a position in the final, and you're up against your own teammate, but it's a situation you put yourself in, isn't it? Now, a position you can also put yourself in is the top four if you come out of the Pro Sport Championship. Now, if we look at some of these drivers here. Oh. Okay. Now, I've just heard that there is an official inquiry. I haven't got any more information at the moment. As soon as we do, we'll obviously bring it to you. But uh, what I was going to say was Jordan Joyce, former pro sport. Connor Halligan, former pro sport uh, champion. Sean Potros, pro sport champion. Case Pullenbury, pro sport champion. If you want to get to the top end of pro, you go through pro sports. So uh, we'll see you next year, anyone who's... So the Pro Sport, just the absolute amazing feeder class that the National Drifting Championship has. Of course, the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. We are in the North Waikato of the North Island of New Zealand. It is Hampton Downs Motorsport Park. And Case Pullenbury, your current Pro Sport champion, comes out to warm up the tyres for his top four battle brought to you by Allied Petroleum. And following him out will be Connor Halligan from Taupo. Beautiful day here in the North Waikato. Of course, uh, you can see the creeping, the go loco on the t-shirts, the shirts. Murray and the team will be down there as well. Busy changing tyres. That is the Pullenbury team here, round number two. Case Pullenbury in the box seat at the moment. But the man who's going to want to take his thunder, Connor Halligan. Connor Halligan, former pro sport champion himself. Now where did Connor Halligan, he qualified in second place. So he is going to lead this one out. We saw Case Pullenbury uh, running quite a, like an aggressive shallowness in his, which gave him basically all the way through to the final turn. It gave him um, a huge advantage in his chase. And I just wonder if he's going to look at doing something this time here. Again, it's very hard to do that unless you astronomically trust the lead driver. These two here have de definitely battled against each other. So the core civil construction and the big dragon looking feature on the side of Case Pullenbury's car. And Launchmaster Willie sends them off and it's going to be Connor Halligan leading them out, like said Steve, into the first corner. Well, let's see what Connor can do. So he comes through, starts booting himself into life. And as we said, look, he's gone up and running that contact already between the two of them and again and that is going to cause a 10-0 advantage to Connor Halligan unless somebody can now Halligan's been hit he doesn't actually have to continue the drift uh, he basically could drive back to the pits and accept the advantage so Halligan all things aside, a great line for the rest of that run as well. Once he got himself sorted after the little bit of contact, and Case Pullenbury is just stranded out there. Oh, it's okay. The, uh, wow. the right front rim is gone. Now, but because of the being the cause of the contact, Kenny might be able to uh, let us know about this. Well, I want to look at another thing here. It's contact. So yeah, they can jack it up five minutes, but he was the cause of the contact. He's left. Okay, let's have a look over here. What I'm looking at is, is Connor Halligan on this line? And did we see, okay, I didn't see any uh, any left foot brake or any handbrake, but you couldn't really see it from that angle, to whether or not. So the things we're looking at is, so here we go, let's have a look at this one here. Connor needed to be a little bit further up, I guess. No, that's, that's an inside clip to outside, isn't it? 
and I think the rim had already gone by that stage there, so it wasn't a double hit. So therefore, we're actually now looking, at, what we'd be looking at is the first contact, because the second contact didn't really matter in the things, because the delamination of his tyre had already happened at that stage there. He was basically... So contact regardless, he can take his five minutes. See, oh, Kenny's yeah. in Whangarei, but he's still making sure he's looking after the team here in the commentary box. Well, that rim will become either a scrap metal piece or a feature on the wall, one of the two. And Case Pullenbury, your current championship points leader, not a good sight getting dragged up onto a tow truck. So as mentioned, he is allowed to take the five minute because of contact, even though it was caused essentially by himself. I'm, um, I mean, I guess in this case here, it's, this is, well, they determined it as Case's fault. Uh, great you can see there goes the team, the so down the end here on the left hand side, that's where, that's where uh, the PB team are. But you know what, let's have a look at how we got here so far today. This is highlights from round two of the D1NZ. Well, certainly hot under the collar. Yeah, that's some great camera shots there. That makes for some good highlight reels throughout the rest of the season. Adam Davies in the 20B powered 180SX. Look at the flames out the back of the Napa Auto Parts 180. And doing the right thing as well, getting himself across to the fire crew. Jeremy Slammett. The great run. The two young guys of New Zealand pro drifting. Case Pullenbury, just clinical in his, in his chase run. He knew it too. There you go, Stephen McIver throwing 180 as he goes down to chat. Lots and lots of great banter out here, but we came back to the track. Extremely and uh, happy Jeremy Slamming as well, wasn't he? Still so stoked regardless. Team DSR versus the elite team. Now Dave Steadman up against Jordan Joyce. This battle here going the way of Jordan Joyce. Here's the big wash wide from Steadman and the pass from Joyce late in the section. Joyce came down and said to him, of course, I got you, bro. Then we went to Sam West. Sam, it just pushed it a little bit too hard. Again, was able to be passed as well. This is Sean Potros, SMP. And then Sam trying to put the pressure on Potros in the chase position and a... Force a mistake. Yeah. Connor Halligan had to chase down Jenkins. Great drive by uh, Troy Jenkins today came through to finish. And then this one here is another great battle as well. Clayton Daly versus Case Pullenbury. Pullenbury not afraid to basically put it on the door or even pass it if he needs to. That's one exciting thing to always watch about the Pullenburys. They're very aggressive drivers and the proximity that comes from that is amazing. With a smoke show being put on there by Case and we lost Clayton Daly out into the dirt. Uh, so I never saw that wheel lock, the dual wheel off at that point there. First time I saw that one there, you mentioned uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Going on what Troy said in his interview, you could see there that Halligan was very shallow. Didn't quite catch whether he uh, put one off there. And there's the elite performance, Stock Street Autos battle between teammates and uh, Potros just not getting in enough room to switch from his teammate Jordan Joyce. They were both happy regardless. And there is the latest highlight from the damage occurred. Okay, so these guys are heading this way here. Stephen, do you know something we don't? Well, my understanding is, having heard from the judges and the intermediary from the judges, watch out behind you, Tony, gonna get hit. Gee, you're so rough. Um, is that the blame has been placed or the on Connor Halligan. Uh, and there's a potential that maybe he slowed up when the second bump came in, all righty? So, thing is, Connor can get a five, and young Case Pullenbury can get a ten, all right? Just so you're making it. your way down that way there, Stephen. What do you think? Rule 6.13.2, rule 6 collision repair. A competitor is permitted one five-minute collision repair, fixed per event. The only time you can, are permitted to use the five-minute rule to return to your pit is to fix your and fix your vehicle as in the event of contact with a fixed object, wall, or another vehicle as per approved. Basically reaffirming exactly what you've just said. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, so we're just going to take a little stroll down here on the ash belt and try and get this all done before five o'clock okay so that's good we're getting close to the to the you know the three versus four and 
one versus two, and there's Bruce Tannock's car, the old Mag and Turbo. Still not used to him having no beard, but that's... I know, grow it back. But it's funny, huh? It just doesn't... Yeah, it's like, I sort of like the idea of having Santa race. It was, it was, you know, there's Justin's car. He's had a great run today, and Carter boys over there, the Jenkins boys, they had a little bit of a moment, but that's been sorted out. Lots of moments today. <laughs> Yeah, but no tissues. That's the most important thing. We haven't had any tissues, but it does remind... Oh, look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous car? My oh, that's an R32. Isn't that gorgeous? My daughter, that is. My daughter would kill for that. That Now, now, now what do you call that colour? Because that is... Burnt, burnt... No, it's not Jaffa. I reckon... Burnt I reckon orange. that's burnt orange. Yeah. Why is... Can you imagine what that thing's worth now, Oh, a hundred? Yeah, yeah. Very, very good. Is it yeah. a genuine GDR, you think? Yeah, look at that's that. You know what? I couldn't tell you, but gee was it's <laughs> nice. Anyway, look at this. How good's this? People just hanging around. Where's wondering, everyone wondering going? What they're... Hello, folks. How are you? Are we having fun? Yeah, about three people again. No care, Stephen. Moving on. Uh, so anyway, so this is what so we're just going to wander down here. Oh, this is a CRO. We, I think we've gone past a uh, elegant uh, car, haven't you? Know, can you get your cars out here? Oh, go around this way, Tony. Sorry, you don't walk into me. Sorry, my bad. Two Stevens, two put, Tonys. Put, put the brakes on too early. <laughs> Let's just have a look at, uh, so he's got a 10. So he gets a 10, old Connor. He, so, oh yeah, yo, that's, get in there, Tony, have a look at that. That is, that is mint, not. There goes Ryan. Oh, can I have that? You want that for the man cave, Steve? I'd love it for the man cave. So they're gonna whip that one off, check the, uh, okay. ensure everything's fine. They just, just rip the front guards off, boys. <laughs> just pull it off. Don't you love dripping, just pull it on. No, there's Cody. I'm going to go talk to someone because I'm being told to. That's the boss is telling me. Let's, let's have a look here. Hang on. <laughs> Not Cody, he'll swear. No, no. <laughs> no, Sean Potros will swear if I talk to him. <laughs> I just asked the case what's going on. I don't want to get... Oh, hang on. No. Look, look at that. Oops, tyres coming off. Well, don't need anyone to fix your tyres. Yeah, that's how you take a tire off. That's how you take a tire off. <laughs> that's the Sean Potros 101 lessons of taking a tire 101. So, let's see if we can just uh, get in there. I'm assuming someone's going to take the time on this, put the time on this one. Once we get, once they've, they've got 10 minutes from when they touch the car. So let me get in here and I'll see if I have a quick check. Case. Jeez. Nice work, pal. Uh, so, just quickly, it was a judge that it was um, Connor's fault, so you get the 10, right? But you were all over wet rag. Yeah, yeah, I think it was just very close. I was close. He was adjusting to his um, line. Steering, steering, okay? Um, I think so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, the boys will be on it, so yeah, they'll get it sussed. Crazy, yeah. You start P22. You're, you're one. You're potentially a run away from getting to the the, uh, the, the final run. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't even know. They're, they're getting, definitely going downhill for a while there, but um, yeah, we've stayed in the fight thanks to the boys. You know, they've just worked tirelessly, like over these past two days, all through the night. Like, yeah, so just yeah. shout out to them. You just sit there and watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just driving. <laughs> uh, so, so I've got to ask you a question, though. I mean, let's be blunt. I know, I know you, can, you, can, you can handle the attention, but before we drift, anything like that, what's, what's in your mind after D1? I mean, um, that would be a dream yeah, for, or, of ours, or me and my brother, yeah. Um, one day be enough on the drift or, or drift mark something just to, just to try and see if we can compete with the best in the world um, yeah that'll be that'll be that'll be cool but um I get the feeling you're good to go let me just let me just double check with the lads and see if you're good to, uh, what do we think uh, we're just checking the front alignment to make sure it's all good but we haven't been to tire it in so that's good so 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 all signs are good it's good so far just check our alignment make sure it's the same as when we now copy make that sure nothing's been but but from your experience here very good <laughs> You're putting me on the spot here. No, no, don't, don't worry about it. But how, do you, how do you control a pup like this, man? I mean, oh, it must be exciting just to watch him go because he has literally no fear. Exactly. I enjoy pit crewing for these fellas just as much as I do driving, so this gets me excited. And you get 10 minutes to fix the car, got to get it going, so a bit of pressure for the boys, but we'll get back out there, take it to the top. The road's got us.
All right, I'll leave you guys alone. He's now, very now, calm. Now, Stephen, the fault has been, has been attributed to Connor Halligan. That's big correct. steering correction and a small handbrake from Connor before contact from Case. That is from the judges. Thank you. Yep, and nothing wrong with a small handbrake. And uh, the colour is electric orange. It's a GTR. Everything is uh, four-wheel four drive. It's got a billet RB34, um, 3.4 going into it to produce 1,400 horsepower for drag racing next season, owned no. by none other than James Jeffries, no. the rookie. No, you're fibbing. That 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 electric orange thing's 1,400 horses. It's got a new 3.4 litre motor going in, and it's going to create over 1,400 horsepower. I, I, James Jeffries looks like he's going drag racing. I think I just got giddy when you said that. But you know me, know nothing about engines, just like pretty looking cars. So some great Well, they're just going through the and finishing everything off. Just quickly, Connor's already gridded up and good to go. So I know that the other team is pretty keen to see a replay as well of it. So let's uh, have a look at what they're saying. So what the judges are suggesting is that just before was, so we didn't see the handbrake, so I don't know if it's, um, I guess it might be Dunlop's camera, James Dunlop, thanks to our camera team, may have been the one that could show the locking of wheels, um, probably oh, too far back to go. go, but that's what they're saying, so we didn't actually see a definitive um, shot, but well, of course we don't see what the judges can see. Yeah, precisely. Take another look here. Little you can keep your eye on the back wheels there. Have we got anything? It looks like it slows down. So all yeah, of this you can't is see it slowing down of. And he's on the gas there as well. So obviously he was just a. Uh, we had nowhere to go. But the hardest thing, I mean, it's for them to obviously have to go and jog back for that specific camera only. So, well, you know what? I think there's a lot of time to be done. Let's uh, let's go up and what do we do now? You know what we should do? Let's come back with a little bit more D1NZ action straight after the break. We've seen uh, certainly a lot of action. I guess one of the things we need to... This is something to relax. Aaron Habib up on the back of his ute there. Look at that. <laughs> Take a look back through. Give our international viewers a wave, Aaron. Go on. Just to your left. Hey, there he is. Aaron Habib. <laughs> the Sultan of Brunei. Am I allowed to call you that, Aaron? Of course I can. He just smiled. Of course, we are here, break time. Why? Because of a big issue that we've seen on track that's required a bit of time to be taken. A lot of deliberation. So with that incident that occurred, essentially that would be a 10-0 advantage to Case, no matter what. If that's what the judges have attributed, he's a 10-0 advantage. And that's what the judges say, that's what happens. Man, I want to, maybe we, we, when we come back, we'll have another look at, uh, at, a, at one more, because one of the, we're not seeing a definitive, um, anything definitive, but what we do need to see is maybe the use of his left hand to actually grab for it, because we're look, I'm constantly looking for maybe the brake lockup rather than actually what's happening through the window of the car. Yeah. You see so, some of the GT cars are whipping up and over the national part of the circuit there. So. So, well, welcome back. This is a Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. That in the middle is Case Pullen Burry. Issues for him, 
Let's uh, let's yeah. see what's going on. Stephen McIver, tell us something. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you something really good. They're, they're good to go. They've got, they're good to go. They've done the alignment, they've checked the tyres, they've ticked together, they've checked the changeover of the tyre was pretty quick. No drums there, they were a little concerned about the tyre rod being bent, nothing there. They're, they are well within their tenement, and guess what? Here we go. So let's go. Well, here we go, all right, Tony. I don't know where to look out there at the moment. It's a uh, hive of activity down in the pit area at the moment. We see Case Pullenbury pull away from his pit area and Connor Halligan, uh, from what we understand, his team maybe take, take a look at some replays as well with the judges. The old Sultan of, Sultan of Brunei just relaxing out there, Aaron Habib. He's had a fantastic round. Great. Uh, he'll certainly be coming in with a lot of encouragement coming through into the next rounds. Of course, we've got down in Manfield Circuit, Chris Amon. Of course, this is, well, I guess it's the second half of the run between Case Pullenbury and Connor Halligan. If the judges are saying that this was caused by Connor, it is a, in the old words, a 10-0 advantage to Case Pullenbury. So there they are, head to head. Nissan Sylvia versus Nissan Sylvia, both S14s. 2JZ versus 1.5JZ, just 100 horsepower or so. Rounded around to the nearest 100, I would say. And we are looking still in the top four. Brought to you by Allied Petroleum. That is the right hand side of the tree. Of course, Sean Potros already sitting there waiting. He's got one foot on the top step. And a shout out to all the media crew around the venue. I wonder what the conversation's going on there. You know what's really cool? You know what's really cool about the growth of Repco Deal and NZ? Big trucks. Yes. And big transporters. I'm noticing well, there's one there, one there. Fangers is brightly done. Then you've got Central Drift ones actually had it. The old girl, the old girl's had a bit of a brush up. She looks pretty cool. Taylor James is 6'4 oh, oh, and Oh yeah, here's <laughs> Tay's car. We do Look at that, Darren Kelly, Kelly and son. Have you, have you got him? Have you got him drifting yet, brother? Oh, yeah, oh, he's on two wheels at the moment. He loves his motorbikes. He's obsessed with trucks. The only way I got him down here today was saying, "Do you want to go see the trucks?" I said, "Do you want to go see some race cars?" And he's like, mm. "Want to see the trucks?" And he's straight in the car. No, so. Actually, it was Dad saying he wants to see the trucks, right? You want to see the trucks, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, look at them all now. Like, pretty cool having all these different things here. Doesn't it show you about the growth? Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah, talk about convenience. I thought we were stepping it up when we had um, enclosed trailers, but yeah, now we got these big rigs. It's definitely lifting the the pit game here at D1 for sure. Better sort Tay out, eh? Oh yeah, no, we'll get it sorted. He'll be back in Manfield. Nice to see you, man. So take a look at the scrub box. We have Case Pullenbury back out there, scrubbing up. And the Go Loco S14.5 S15 front on it, and Connor Halligan as well. Looks like he's scrubbed up and making his way to the line. Well, as they rumble on through to catch up with our mate, Launch Master Willie. We get ready to go again. This is going to be the second half of the battle. It's going to be Case pulling Burry's turn to lead. Yeah, Case qualifying all the way down in 11th spot. Launch Master Willie sends them off. Connor Halligan qualified in second. This is the second part of the top four battle on the right-hand side of the tree. So Case Pullen Burry's going to have to set one heck of a lead run. That left front wheel all locked up and he's dialing on a fair bit of angle. Few corrections from the chase driver as they head down to that centre section of this lap. Here comes Connor Halligan trying to close the gap up again. He's going to try and knock on the door. Oh, so contact on the side of Case Pullen Burry, which made him straighten up and sent him off the track there. And Connor Halligan comes through to finish the run. Wow, I mean, just... I don't know what's going on there. They're going to come down. We'll have a look at it and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see if we as like commentary can maybe talk about what we saw. So we've seen it. it's a fairly nice run to start with. Um, you can see like that left front lockup. I'd be quite interested for Case and the team to know what's going on there. Lots and lots of angle. You can see a few corrections from the chase driver. And one of the things that Connor knows is he's got to go up and set a mistake from the lead driver. Come through in this position here. So it puts a big dive on. And yeah, just the contact there. Like it made Case Pullenbury's car straighten up. And Connor Halligan hanging on to the drift coming through to finish off the run there. So 
Let's see what they have to say. We've got Case Pullenbury on the left. We've got Connor Halligan on the right. Decision coming from the judges. Connor's smiling. That's at least a good start. <laughs> what do you do? You know what you do? You throw cannabis and pigeons and give the win to Connor just to see the whole place melt down. <laughs> Hey, um, what's up? What happened there? I don't know, what, I don't know what's going on. It's getting a bit crazy, isn't it? All sorts. Of what happened there? That one? Yeah. Um, I think Case broke an axle by the sounds, so, yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Is that right, Case? Oh, well, hang on. I'll go and ask him. You don't yell across the blimmin' pit lane, Connor. Come on. Remember you? You were the, you were the fault the last one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Connor says, according to Connor, you, have you broken an axle? Nah, yeah, um, right yeah, nah, yeah, nah, nah, yeah. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah, 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 yeah. Nah, yeah. right hand side axle. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the rear. Yeah, oh. Yeah, um, just coming into the second corner there. Um, yeah, just went to go dump the clutch and just one wheel, so. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, no, nah, not ideal. <laughs> ah, okay. It's a crazy old day, huh? Yeah, she's turned into a bit of a bit of a wild one. <laughs> yeah, I could have said cluster, but that's okay. It's uh, it is what it is. Um, so it's broken an axle. Did it did that from the contact previously? Um, nah, nah. Probably no? just um, the the clutch and like you have to the track's like quite grippy, so um, a lot of load on the parts. So yep. yeah, every now and again it happens. So you're say, you're saying quite you're saying quite simply car break. Alone, simple yeah. car brake. Yeah, yeah, simple car brake alone, separate from a uh, separate from this. Yeah. Okay, hang on. We have we have results. We have results. Oh, my apologies. Director got a little excited. <laughs> just like to throw, just like to throw a few people under the bus once in a while. So here we are, sitting in uh, with 25 minutes to go for so-called uh, curfew time. What's going on is the question. So beautiful day here. It's all very quiet. Feels like there's there's a little bit of tension building to figure out can we actually find someone that can go through to the uh, number one versus two. Here's the judges' decision: Andrew Redwood, Joel Counter, O M T. Okay, lads, O M T. Would you like to do it again? But the axle could be an issue for Case Pull and Burry, right? Because that was a simple car break, and the rules would suggest two minutes and that sort of stuff. So, I don't know. Oh, okay. Let's move on, but it's one so more time. We'll figure that out when you get to your pits. Well, trying to find the information on this one at the moment. So, so whether they, or not they have to jack up the car to change the tyres anyway, don't they? That's correct. And he's allowed to have the time to change the tyres and accidentally change the axle at the same time. And I mean, that's what we're here to see, battles, isn't it? But we're waiting for the OMT as well, so it's not going to give him a lot of time. Let's have a look from above. So we'll take a look at that there, comes through and he's gone to boot the clutch there and then you can clearly actually see there isn't it, there's only smoke coming from the one side of the car and lots of grip up on this track at the moment, Connor Halligan comes through to complete the run and washes nice and wide there. Hampton Downs Motorsport Park here in North Waikato. Take a look again at the lead run from Connor Halligan. So there's... Yeah, so this appears to be... It's just a 10-0, 10-0. Um, so they have until the next bracket under the rules that we have with D1NZ to fix the car. The problem they have is that they are already the next, next bracket. Yeah. Wow. So drama unfolding later on in the afternoon here as we take a look at the local wildlife. Oh, there's a cute little baby one. I mean, sorry. Oh, look, there's a cute baby one. <laughs> My gosh, Stephen. This Stephen, not that Stephen. So, the way it's playing out, Sean Potros just so chilling out, waiting for his top case, three battle. Case has to fix the axle within a tyre and refuel change. He can send it into something first lap and activate his five minutes, though. <laughs> of course, that's going to be a 10-0. Um, <laughs> you should probably read it before it just gets typed out and you could reset. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Kitty Ruddle. So interesting outcomes at the moment. We're in the top four, nothing short of a little bit of drama. That's what makes it good. Here at the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship, round number two. What's that one? Nice. It's a Frisian. Nice rural. I don't know. Somebody's going to say, no, it's not, and there'll be an official complaint. <laughs> that's a cow. Moo. No, that's a bull. I don't know. Um, I don't even. Oh, who's leaving? I think there's. No. That car's going too fast on State Highway 1. Case Bullenbury, doesn't matter what happens now, I think should sit at the top spot. 176 from Dave Steadman. Nice jump up for him, 138. Sean Potros, 134. That could change, of course. Well, that is actually going to change because he is going to get points for the first and second battle. Connor Halligan, again, that's going to change as well. Jordan Joyce, I think, has stays where it is, doesn't it? So the only people can move is everyone in the top five outside of Dave Steadman can move up. Case will do the same. So I'm assuming that at the end of this one here, Case is still going to lead no matter what. But uh, lots of work to do. That's the tail end again. Only 20 cars in the Pro Championship. Who knows, during the uh, rest of the season, we might see some pro sports. You know, let's go hang out with the pros. That's, uh, you know what that is? That's art. That, that is art. Do you know what that is? Nature. Also art. Uh, Connor Halligan just uh, getting some refreshment. Ah, uh, see, look, I'm sure that was alcohol, and then he quickly switched it to water when the cameras fell on it. <laughs> Stephen McIver, how's the pits going? That was his mum, Lisa. You can't say that about mum. Mum can't be plying her son with it. Lisa, come over here. No, don't say no to me, please. Nicely. Come over here. I see that nicely, right? Yeah, a bit nervous. What's going on? Oh, uh, yeah, the hearts. Need some heart pulls. Yeah. Heart, oh, you don't know. We don't want heart pulls. We just want, we just want the sun to just keep going. We do. Go hard, Con. Oh, Ned Lies, go hard, honey. Okay, so what's, this is crazy, right? One more time. What's this doing with your head? While, I, while I'm there, can I just give a big shout out to mum for feeding the team, doing the baking, baking an egg pie. Always on form, you know, gotta, gotta give a shout out to her because, you know, it wouldn't happen without her. The boy's always fed, so yeah, stoked on that, but cool. Oh, isn't that nice, Lisa, eh? Are you cooking dinner tonight? No, he can make it, he can make it. He wins, he can make it, what do you reckon? Can you cook, can you cook, buddy? Well, I had a go last night and um, got kicked out of the kitchen pretty quickly because I was, I was burning the eggs, so anyway. <laughs> Not really, but yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, so um, you ready to go to the line? Yeah. I um, what's what's happening with Case's car? Because I know we had it one more time, so it'd be cool if they could um. Give well, it. my understanding is what I've heard, and if I'm allowed to say that, I'm allowed to say that once. Well, okay, so I'm now compromised, am I? I just go to the line, pal. Okay, we'll go over. Okay, there we go. Did I get myself out of that one? Poorly. Here, I'll try and pick up from there. Oh, I'm, so just gonna move on. I'm just going to move on now and hide. <laughs> so what currently is the, is the case is the driver that's uh, the driver that's obviously got a broken axle has until the start of the next bracket to repair their car. But of course, they are already the start of the next bracket. So they want to get a move on and line up at the line because if the other car drives up onto the line, Tony G, there is only a certain amount of time that Case Paul and Burry can, uh, can get there. So he's basically, if Connor Halligan was to line up at the line, I think Case Paul and Burry has one minute to get there. Ah, uh, one minute, okay, so not a lot of time. A glance across the venue that is Hampton Downs Motorsport Park. Do, the, do your children beat up on you? I've just got a message from my daughter saying, ha, 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 a cute little baby. Good one, Dad. Wow. I think she likes that. It was a poo kiko. <laughs> Wasn't in a punga tree. Do welcome you along if you are here live at the venue as well, enjoying the sights and sounds of the National Drifting Championship here at the club circuit of Hampton Downs. Let's go down to Stephen McIver. You know what I love about this? 
sportsmanship. You know, we said, you know, what happens if he goes to the line, then, you know, poor old Casey's got a minute. He's not going to go to the line. He, he's he's going to wait. Oh, there's an issue. OK, I'm sure he'll get it done in five. <laughs> the, the OK. Um, Don't ask Joe. OK, Joe, Joe. Um, I have to ask this question, and, and you are live and, and being, you know, the boss. Uh, does he have to go to the line? Do you have to make him go to the line? I can call him to the line. OK, and what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to think about it for three it looks like Connor's got issues under there with um, the shininess of his intake manifold. Yeah, no, they, looks like it's an intake manifold issue. OK, they, they just currently got the cleaner on there and they'll be able to get that sorted. That gauge is still able to read. So it's going to get to a point where we're time critical and he's just going to have to go to the line, right? Good, yeah. OK, so when do you make that call with 15 minutes left to go and still potentially six runs to go? A few runs, you know. This is one more time, remember? <laughs> OK. Wow. I'm doing, my, I'm doing my best not to try and put too much pressure on the situation, so I'm just going to step back and see what Joe does. No pressure, Joe. Well, I mean, what do you do? Well, the point I was trying to make, Steve, was that Connor knows the rules. He doesn't want to put his friend, his mate, at a disadvantage. OK, so that's what I was saying, trying to say the sportsmanship involved here is five star. That, that is, Joe's, Joe's not going to be happy if these guys don't finish on time. I'm sure I... Okay, so Joe has just said, and I've heard it for my own ears, one minute to get to the line for Connor. Okay, so there you go. There we go, so Connor Halligan, one minute to get to the line. So Joe, for those, for, so Joe, for those... She's walking away from me. OK, here's one for you, Stephen. So just briefly, Joe. So, OK, Connor, you've given a minute to get to the line. All the way, please. Uh, so what about Case? What's the story now that once he reaches the line, Case has how long to get to the line? Also one minute. OK, so once you get confirmation, you'll go down and put a clock on that, correct? That's right. Wow, don't you love a bit of drama? Now, Stephen, if they don't get to the line, it will be split by qualifying order. And that's your fourth place, or your second place qualifier. So even if they don't get to the line, Connor will take the win because he has a higher qualifying position. <laughs> okay, my head's, my head's starting to spin now, so I'm going to walk away. Well, Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, round two of the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Case Pulavari is on the way. It says a 20 degree high, I can tell you it's about 50 at the moment. He's got a new set of tyres on and he is ready to battle his way into the final. We have 13 minutes left to finish this one here off. What happens then? Does it go to championship order if it comes to time? Does it come to qualifying order if it comes to time? I believe it's qualifying. Therefore, if they can't get this done, the young man, Paul and Burry, is shot. He's going to be lining up this time here. So... All right, send them. All right, so Connor Halligan makes his way out onto the track and gets himself into the scrub box to get some heat into those rear tyres. And uh, like you said, Stephen McIver down in the pit area, a great show of sportsmanship from Topor driver, Connor Halligan. And then Case Pullenbury will follow out very shortly. And so Connor's making his way now, and now it's time for Case to probably quickly uh, get some heat into those rear tyres. What is going on? I'll tell you what, it's entertaining. That's it. Course of construction on the door of the S14, S15 fronted. Sylvia of Case Pullenbury. He is your current point leader. He qualified in 11th spot. Connor Halligan qualified in second spot. So that means that Connor Halligan will lead them out. This is a one more time battle in the top four for the D1NZ National Drifting Championship round two. We're going back action out on track now. We've had more action off track in the last half hour than we have on, Steve. 
Yeah. I mean, it's great for the sponsors, isn't it? Connor Halligan, Case Pullenbury. This is OMT number one. After contact, it goes down to launch Master Willie. And it is full send. The higher qualifier will set the pace from the lead position at, as they head into the first turn. This is the Pro Championship. This is the Repco D1NZ. And Connor Halligan, a nice start for him. Case trying to claw it back. He's running that same line he did earlier on. So, yeah, Connor Halligan, massive smoke. And from smoke behind of Case Pullenbury as well. The proximity is there from Pullenbury. And this is a good battle. Look at that there. Nice and tight between these two drivers. Good lead line as well. As they come through to finish the section off, it's... Oh, Case just smokes it. <laughs> And, wow, look at him mungy up the straight, literally throwing on angle left and right to go up and uh, basically pull the car up as they get ready for the second pass. We'll have a little quick look at the replay as we see Halligan in the lead position. Yeah, nice wide arc for Halligan as well through the first turn there, filling that clipping point out. And then look at that Arizona, he's almost right out by that cone. And Pullenbury gives some good room for Halligan to switch there. A little bit shallow, but he washes nice and wide to fill the outer zone there as well. Look at the smoke pouring off the back of both these cars. Grabs a bit of handbrake, sets the car up again, comes through, hits he's the cones to finish. I mean, it's just mobile clipping point, that's fine. Using up every piece of track he can, we'll get... So here's another look. And Case pulling Burry, geez, that last corner, he was in a lot of smoke. Looked like he was going to get lost in it, but he held it together. So, see if we can pick anything up. I can't see anything splitting these two drivers at the moment. A little dab on the handbrake there, some good grip shown from both these drivers. And Case... Just, yeah, gets back in the pocket there, getting smoked out big time, but hold on to it and got through to the end of the section in close proximity. So we know he's grabbed Halligan. the cone. Did he put a right rear off at the same time? I guess... You know what, let's just get ready and send him again. We need to find a result because we have no time to... So I don't see there being a battle for third and fourth. We're a time restraint. Anyway, Case Pull and Bow. So Pullenbury leads, look at him billowing smoke, huge angle and a correction. So Pullenbury, the first mistake that we've seen in this final Sorry battle. Sorry drop as well just then, Tony. So interesting happenings here. Case Pullenbury showing that in fact he's not a robot, he is slightly human and there was a correction early on in the run. Connor Halligan right there, proximity wise. I just love being friends with both uh, drivers and teams. What's your, what's your take on that one? Let's have a look. So I called a correction, dragging that left front wheel. So they're at this stage, they're in that big angle. And that, that was the correction I talked about. Yeah. And Connor Halligan doing well not to go into the side of Pullenbury there. So that was a Connor dirt drop, which would basically be the same as what could potentially be a dirt drop for, because uh, you saw the dirt turbo come through. Connor just readjusts slightly. All right, let's have a look at this one here. Now, one of the things we're looking for is the correction. So he's come through sideways and kind of arced off. Judges know what they want to see. This is where I said there was a dirt drop, and there was. So just the one wheel for Connor Halligan. Yeah, so it was almost a... a a semi over rotation in the first corner for Case Pullenbury. And he had to uh, make that correction that you spoke about, Steve. All right. Top four. We're looking for the driver to go through the final against Sean Potros. It is Case Pullenbury on the left. It is Connor Halligan on the right. Are we left? Are we right? Waiting for the judge's decision. Close call for this one here. I'm going to go with Case, I think. Uh, sorry, with uh, with Connor Halligan. I think the little mistake from Case in the first corner. I'm, yeah, tend to think the same thing. We're about to find out. Redwood, counter, Farido. Wow, Case Pullenbury takes the win going into the final. <laughs> You must be touched with gold dust, I think. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know. It must have been extremely close. Um, I could feel Connor on, on his chase on my door, and I was, I was trying to do the best on my chase. Um, 
and just yeah like extreme sportsman eh like yeah like really big ups to him like for even letting this battle carry on so um no yeah all right go get ready for one and two man we're going to get connor out there pretty quickly too because we're going to because we uh, need you to go and go for three and four man first of all first of all congratulations on being the ultimate sportsman <laughs> knowing the rules and not burning your mate oh it's all good i mean um that's what we're all here for right is to do some do some sick driving and um no one wants to to, to win or go through because of a mechanical or, or yeah. anything silly so no, I, I think it was the, the you know what i think is the right thing to do and um it was cool to go out there and do it one more time and yeah sick my car's getting a hard time battling case that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> oh man um but yeah okay no, i'm stoked that's all right cool. turn and burn baby because three and four you got to get going all right ah true that cool get on see you in a minute <laughs> okay Okay, the battle for third and fourth. That is going to be Connor Halligan. And Jordan Joyce. So, that one there, I certainly didn't see it the same way I thought. Look at that beautiful clipping point. How is that still alive? Well, it's somewhat battered. And still a very relaxed Aaron Habib up on the back of that ute there. So... Again, this is the uh, road to the final. As we see Jordan Joyce making his orders, his way down the top. Sean Potros coming through until he battled his teammate. He's going to go into the uh, final with Case Pullenbury going up against Jeremy Slamet, Clayton Daly, Connor Halligan. And now he's about to face Sean Potros in the final. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, not what I was expecting. I have to admit that one there, Steve. I'm sure we'll have some reasoning very shortly. And oh, there's a look at Taylor James. This is a CDT Drift, a newly acquired 64 Impala. Okay, let's have a look at the championship standings. Currently, Case Pullenbury on a 196. Sean Potros has moved up into second position, 154. Dave Steadman, 138 from Connor Halligan. He's making the step up as well. And then Jordan Joyce, Fanger, Dan, Jeremy Slammett, Sam West, Clayton Daly and Luke Fink. That rounds out the top 10. And here is the best of the minor places with Michael Thorley, Taylor James, Cody Pullenbury, James McManoway and Bruce Tannock making up 11th to 15th from Adam Davies, Calvin Clark, Troy Jenkins, Brody Maher and Adam Camplin. That's the top 20. Still waiting on a uh, response from uh, from the team in the, in the judges' box, but I can tell you that they are furiously typing. So, nice busy pit area there for the Go Loco. Pullenbury Drift team and a beautiful day here at Hamden Downs. Not a seagull in sight. Which is always a good thing. <laughs> of course, Hampton Downs, one of three tracks from our the great Tony Quinn. I saw Tony Quinn in the paddock today. Hope he's enjoying the action here. He'll be across in the Super Sprint paddock, of course, racing a Porsche in the GT series. Of course, tomorrow sees the finale of round seven of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. Let's have a look again. This is Connor Halligan in the lead position. So we'll see if we can figure out. Connor Halligan there putting on a great chase run. Colin Barry right there and behind in the pocket. And super close. I mean, yeah, like you say, Steve, there might have been a slight deduction. It's, of, yeah, so hard to sort of understand. And here we go. Colin Barry in the lead there. Big over rotation and a rear correction there. Connor Halligan doing a good job in the chase position there. Loses a touch of proximity, but closes it back up. Got something for us there, Steve? Yeah, of course. So, uh, Connor, he had a solid lead run with Case giving an unreal chase. Oh, it's Graham. Hello, Graham. That's how incredible Graham. He's a cameraman. He can't shoot himself, so he's going to shoot a shadow. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Case had a solid lead run, is what they're saying, uh, which with Case giving an unreal chase. Case's lead did have that correction. 
but Connor didn't have the proximity to capitalise. Case's chase weighed in his favour and that is why he went through. So thank you very much to the judging team for letting us know as our four times New Zealand Drift King makes his way on out of Hampton Downs. He'll be heading back to Whangarei, no doubt. And Team DSR as well on the pack up. One will be heading north, they'll be heading to in the southern direction, heading for the bay. <laughs> heading for the Bay of Plenty, Tauranga, Team DSR. As we see, there's a car parked up. My time says one minute to go. I think we might have got... OK, Jordan is on the line. He is now going into scrub. Right now, Case has one minute. Connor, sorry, Connor has one minute to get to the line. So we take a look at them head to head. 2JZ versus 1.5JZ, both in the S14 chassis. And it is 870 horsepower of Jordan Joyce versus 700 horsepower of Connor Halligan. There's Connor Halligan now, so he has uh, he has made it. So these two will be facing each other. And Jordan Joyce being the high qualifier will lead them both out after Connor gets into the scrub box. This is for third and fourth round number two of the Pro D1NZ Repco National Drifting Championship here at Hamden Downs Motorsport Park. Yeah. Getting those tyres nice and warm is Connor Halligan. Driver from out of Topor versus Auckland for third and fourth. Oh, these uh, battery changes happen. The other circuit getting swept for tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, here we go, flying in. This is the battle for the last spot on the podium. This is the battle for third and fourth position. We've got Jordan Joyce going up against Connor Halligan. It goes down to launch Master Willie. It's full send. And Jordan Joyce, as a higher qualifier, he qualified, for, uh, qualified first yesterday this is the second qualifier as well it's a battle for first and second and their battle for third and fourth so jordan joyce fills that first clip and out of zone very well and looking to get right through there with some close proximity from connor halligan and he's fresh off his recent battle so he knows exactly what that track feels like under tire they come through to complete the first half of the run good battle there from these two drivers i like the chase run i think connor's done a great job in there and a nice wide lead run as well from Jordan Joyce. Take a look at the Dale ITM replay. So look for that first clipping point there, right? Jordan Joyce right on that one, but Connor Halligan, look at him, right there and a couple of metres off. And nice job, he, did, he allowed uh, Jordan to come through and switch Jordan back again on the accelerator as they head down to that final turn, just arcing off the turn and then foot flat to the floor. Grabs that out of clip for the lead driver. Proximity for our chase. That's it, yeah, Connor is keeping next to only a couple of hundred mil at that times. Well, let's see what Connor Halligan can do from the lead position. I've watched the chase of Jordan Joyce today. Yeah, he was so quick to get to basically transition into drift. He's gone for that shallow line. He wants to get on the door and he's... Ro is that contact? Oh. <laughs> I think it was as close to contact, and that's why we've seen them back, why we've seen a gap being created, because Jordan's actually had to get onto the brakes, essentially. Jordan, though, he's back again. What's going to happen this time? Connor's slid quite wide again, brings it back out, and what a way to finish. Oh, and there goes the bootlet of Connor Halligan's car. I would say maybe there was a slight amount of contact. So we'll take a look at the second half of that run on the Dale ITM replay. And let's see there, we'll probably see well and truly from that drone stop. So we're thinking that maybe, the, we talked about the possibility of contact through here. So let's say that there was contact there and maybe it loosened the boot lid, uh, the trunk lid if you're watching in the States. <laughs> so Jordan Joyce doing well to close the proximity right up there as well. There was a big gap that got formed through the center part. Big uh, angle, nice wide arc. Like you say, so Steve. They hold on to this the whole way through as they come through to finish, and off it goes. Might have been a little bit of contact uh, after the line. Basis as well. for new evasive. <laughs> for a, uh, George from Inspire You Media. Let's go and see there. Is there a result? 
And yes, there is. Connor Halligan will take third position. He's not even looking at me. You picked up third position, pal, and you came in without your boot. <laughs> yeah, I felt Jordan right on the end um, pushing me across the line. That was funny. <laughs> but no, I'm stoked on that. It's cool. It's been an epic day. Mean driving. Doesn't get better than that. I'm going to be happy too. All right, just quickly. Jordan came in shaking his head. I'm going to be quick here because we want to get this uh, final underway. You knew what, what happened, but did you nudge him? Uh, yeah, off the start, man, chasing him. I just, yeah, it was a bit late on the chase. So it was catch up the whole way. And then, yeah, couldn't get off the off the loud pedal. <laughs> you know what? It's been a great day for the team. Yeah, no, we're happy as, eh? You know, like, uh, we're stoked to be where we are. And uh, whoever helped us to get here, we're happy as for the moment. Cheers. See you for the double round of Manfield, man. Cheers, man. Thank you. So pretty stoked Jordan Joyce is still happy as with fourth place and he'll jump out of the car pretty swiftly to go and watch his teammate Sean Potros battle it out for the well, number one spot. Well talk about battling it out this young man here has certainly done his best to battle his way to where he is today. He's had one more time. So he's broken axles. Uh, look he broke almost everything he could yesterday as well. The car wasn't on song. His brother didn't make it but he's here at the end. He won the first round in his rookie season. Uh, very first time on debut the only other driver to do that was Darren Kelly Darren Kelly in the field today well it's the elite performance and an elite performance that will be need to be for Sean Potros if he is going to take the top spot against the kid who won the pro sport last year elite performance on the door Sean Potros behind the wheel. The higher qualifier will set the first lead run. And of course, we know that both of them qualified badly yesterday as we see two mates chatting to each other. That's Connor. That's Jordan Joyce. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the final. As we get ready to go down, forget the rest. They are the best. This is the Repco D1NZ National Drifting Championship round two, Hampton Downs, and it is final time. So Case Pullenbury throws it in there, and there's a little bit of a gap. Sh Sean Potros real shallow through that first corner. Look at the smoke show coming from the back end of the core silver construction. Case Pullenbury car as he throws it through the center part of the section. Sean Potros really trying to get on the door right where he is now. A slight gap starting to build as we see a correction from Case Pullenbury to get himself around the corner. Sean Potros though, on the door comes through to finish. That's going to be a hard one to call advantage for. Yeah, we'll take a good look at the Dale ITM replay here to try and dissect this one. Steve, it was uh, a little bit messy from a little bit. Both drivers, a couple of mistakes made. Um, good initiation there from Case Pullenbury and Potros was very shallow. Uh, Case picking up that clipping point really well and then filling out that out of zone. This is where the proximity really gets put on by Potros. Let's Pullenbury switch. Not as much angle from Potros. Potros, not as much angle, but obviously following some fairly good momentum. He comes through. One of them grazes the uh, the dirt through there. So I say that we've got to tire off what might have uh, maybe pointed some form of, uh, you know, whether it's 5-5, whether it's 6-4 advantage. This is the second half of the battle now, though. And we see Sean Potros tapping on the roof. So. Let's have a look and see what happens this time, Tony, as they both head into the first turn. This should be the last run of the day, Hampton Downs. Round two, the D1NZ. This is the pros, and they're putting on a show. Yeah, Potros is shallow again through that first corner, and what that's done is had Pullenbury right up on the door, and look at the proximity from Case Pullenbury all the way through the centre part of the section. Big smoke show. He hasn't got himself lost in the smoke whatsoever. A little bit of a dab on the handbrake there, and Case Pullenbury right on the door there, all but touching as they come through the final turn. Ladies and gentlemen, how you like that for proximity from from Paul and Barry. That is just crazy. How old is this kid? He's driving like he's 40 <laughs> and that he's been doing it for years and years and years. Let's take a look at that Dale ITM replay. Case Paul and Barry in the chase position. Slight correction to come through, but at this point here, he's like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming for you. So Sean Potros here with that shallow lead. We love dirt turbo. I don't know which, which car that's come off. And Pullenbury right there. And as he comes in to the final turn, just pours on the angle and matches exactly what Potros is doing. Look at that slight, ever so slight touch. And they're loving it. Case Pullenbury. Okay, here's the, uh, another look from that same battle. So Case just trying to get the car. Look how close. 
I mean, is that a correction? What is that? Oh, there is corrections in the chase there from Case. There's well, the wheel no. off. But that's only a minor points deduction for the lead driver. The case is just doing everything he can for proximity to get on the door. That's the only thing that he cares about right now is if I'm going to win this, I'm going to win it on the door and the judges are going to see that. He absolutely loves that. Look at that. Swatting wasps out the window. Well, that's the, of course the only time you're allowed to do that. Well, case is out of the car. So is Sean Potros. So, very interesting. I mean, there was a couple of little corrections. See what the judges have to say. We'll head down pit side with Stephen McIver. This is the good fun, right? Now we, now we figure out who wins round two of Repco D1NZ. I will get the nod in my ear. Uh, crazy thing to think that if, and this is the big if, if Case Pullen Burry wins this round, he'll be unbeaten for something like, gosh, last year in the first round of uh, D1NZ Pro. So, whew. anyway. Uh, he did say beside me that uh, you know I want to I want to break the str I want to break I, I can't even see I can like oh okay right okay fair we go okay so your winner round two Repco D1NZ is <laughs> Case Bullenbury <laughs> wow um, <laughs> I, I, I got to say and I, we, we won't muck around here P22 to P1 not a bad day. Yeah, pretty out of a weekend for us. Um, yeah, just the boys went hard this weekend, eh? Trying to get the cars back on, <laughs> out on track, you know, both of us, so. And you did your best to break it as well. Yeah, <laughs> not bad, eh? Not bad, eh? Get on that, get ready for that podium, buddy. Sean, I know you wanted to, you were, just the, the couple of moments there, right? Oh, yeah, but Case is, um, he's a robot, eh? He's a good driver, and he couldn't be in a better final. He's just pushing around the old um, track, so, no, he deserves it. He's a good driver, and as well. All right, mate, get ready for the podium because we're going to do that podium straight away. All right, time for the official podium of round two of Repco D1NZ. Joe Mulder, our uh, boss at D Repco D1NZ, will hand out the, the trophies and the champagne. In P4, Jordan Joyce. Give it up for Jordan Joyce, top qualifier this weekend. And in P3, driving the JOBS 14, Connor Halligan. And P2 in the elite performance, S14, you know who that is, Sean Potros. And your champion, your champion of round two of Repco D1NZ, driving the core civil construction S15, and still your championship leader, you know who it is, give it up for Case Pullen Burry. And now, gentlemen, hold those trophies high up for the photographers that are sitting in front of you and the hundreds of cameras. And now do what you need to do after a hard day at the office. Spray some champagne. Oh, it must feel good. So there you go, folks. What a way to do They can actually go out and do victory skids as well if they get on, get on their bikes and uh, make the most of it. So... What a way to uh, wind up week or round number two of the Repco D1 and Z case. Pullen Burry, the young man who said that he'd actually, his dream would be going to do Formula Drift, uh, does the job again. So, wowzers, it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty impressive. Let's just get back and have a quick chat to him until someone tells me to stop jabbering. I mean, mate, <laughs> you, the way you are driving at the moment, the way you are responding to pressure, can you, can you give us an insight as how, how you do this? Um, I, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really have a method or anything for it. Um, I guess I just grew up around the scene a lot um, with my brother, you know, like since I was little. So I'm, I'm not. Um, I guess the pressure isn't foreign ar around the, around like this sort of atmosphere. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if that has something to do with it. So, so many young people out here wanting to to be a, to be a drift king, you know, get out there and have some fun and, and do the thing. And I, I really want to know the the. The whole, the whole idea of uh, doing the sim. You're a big sim driver. Does that, do you think the amount of time you spend on the sim gives you an edge? Um, yeah, like I, I think I think it does work. Um, 
I think that, especially if you're in a position where you can't drive all the time, I think that the sim's perfect. But um, yeah, I think yeah, it's it's definitely taken my driving to a, to a different level since I started here. Do you do you honestly live and breathe this? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Not many breaks, but um. I love it, eh? Yeah, no, it's good. Got to make sure that Cody gets himself sorted for the next double round in Manfield, eh? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. We'll be back swing. Um, yeah, and he'll be up there, no doubt, real soon. So keep an eye out for that. All right, you, go, you want to do some skid, eh? Yeah. You've done a few skids. Might do a victory skid. One more, yeah. One more. Well done, mate. Congratulations. There you go. Case Pullenbury is your champion of round two and continues to be unbeaten. I think it's now over something like six six rounds. So how good is that six rounds? Uh, I was reminded by that of Sean Potros because he, he had that he had that in his head that he actually wanted to uh, try and break that duck, but he hasn't been able to do it. So Sean Potros finishes P2. And most importantly for the uh, elite performance team too, big, big points. Also for Mon Halligan. So, as you can hear, that's, that's Jordan Juice to finish P4, starting to, to wind things up. And, of course, Case Pullenbury uh, just about to ready to get in and, and do that victory skit. And why wouldn't you on a beautiful day here at Hampton Downs when, just a reminder, tomorrow, if you're watching this on KO Sports Australia, motorsport.tv, and also uh, here on Sky Sport, tomorrow, 10 a.m., we're back into the final round of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship. We will wrap up the Somerset GT New Zealand Championship and there's some beautiful machines out there and also we'll give out the Porsche Endurance Trophy as well. So it's been a cracking old day, a little bit longer than expected because the, the pro boys were trying to break cars but they're breaking them because they're having fun. That has been the overriding thing. A bunch of the noise and so I'm right under the cross pipe and they've all been having fun. So on behalf of all the team that have worked very hard, very, very hard today, we shall see you in Manfield for a double round, rounds three and four, and tomorrow from 10 on Sky Sport and around the world for the final round of the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship.